Okay, good morning, uh, Council. Good morning, staff. Good morning, public. Uh, welcome back to our budget uh, process here this morning. I will call the meeting to order by resolution. Moved by Councillor Warden, seconded by Councillor Bivelds, that the budget meeting be hereby reconvened. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of the motion? Motion's carried. Madam Clerk, if we could do a roll call, please. Councillor Armstrong? Here. Councillor Bivelds? Here. Councillor Fraser? Here. Councillor Gardner? Here. Councillor Laundry? Here. Councillor McDonald? Has joined the meeting. Councillor McGillis? Here. Warden Prevo? Here. Councillor Smith? Here. Councillor Warden? Here. Councillor Wirt? Here. Councillor Williams? Here. Okay, thank you. So we're going to move right into the transportation uh, division, but if I can ask everybody to put their mics on mute, please. Thank you. I'll uh, I'll begin. Yep. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. I trust you can uh, see that. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go through the. Um, really, again, similar to yesterday, we're going through the 2021 uh, work. Uh, more so than the 2020 kind of accomplishments just uh, in the interest of time. And certainly if there is any questions about 2020 and, and, and that work that we did, by all means, feel free to ask. Um, I always like to start this off uh, whenever we do start to talk about budget for the transportation services uh, division of our department. Uh, we have a pretty significant road system and in that light, we need to make sure we are investing the right amount of money into that road system. So, you know, we we are looking after 2,000 kilometers of paved roads. So it's a thousand center line kilometers, but we have to look after both sides of the roadway. So it is 2,000 kilometers of road that we look after. Uh, replacement value is approaching one billion dollars. Um, we have over 200 bridges, and the bridge is over three meters in size. Again. Uh, the the value of that is quite significant, over $200 million, and that's just based on the last time we we took a kind of global look at those things. So with inflation, those those numbers and those and the investments we continue to do, those numbers continue to increase. Um, you know, those those two values that I just mentioned don't include all the culverts, intersection, road sign, patrol yards, and all the other things that we have to look after as part of our work. Uh, 2020 was a was a good year for us. Uh, we not only invested in our infrastructure, we invested in people. So uh, some of our big accomplishments last year included having uh, hiring a manager of infrastructure, Mike, uh, to join our team, which is opening up a lot of doors for us in terms of what uh, what we can do in the future. And I'll talk about that as we look at 2021. Uh, we did 46 kilometers of paving last year, which was uh, equivalent of putting down about 46,000 tons of asphalt. Uh, we did microsurfacing, a uh, bunch of culvert replacements, both in-house and contracted. So uh, a lot of work done. Um, not only that, our bridges uh, were, were also looked after. We did four major bridge projects, and that's the most I've done in one single year in my career so far here at the county. Uh, Chrysler Bridge, South Branch Bridge, Grays Creek Bridge, and complete replacement of uh, Doran Creek Bridge, which is a large uh, over three meter diameter culvert. Uh, 2020, we also spent some money on the equipment, as we always do, uh, looking at uh, buying, we bought a plow last year, we bought our anti-icing tank, again, in some of those efforts that we continue to look at to, um, you know, save save money, and, and we talked yesterday about salt and salt management plan, so uh, we've invested in those types of things to continue to uh, move forward with that work. Now, getting into 2021, of course, uh, as any budget, it's split into both uh, revenue and uh, expenses. So I'll briefly talk about the 2021 revenue and some of the big, I guess, drivers or changes compared to 2020. Um, we are budgeting for a small increase in aggregate royalties. So that's the money we receive as part of uh, from the quarries that are located within SDNG. And we continue to see kind of a, a slight increase year over year with, with the money we get through that. Uh, we've increased sales and recovered costs, and that's just um, that's where we kind of we, we do our financial in and out for 
joint projects. And, and the big one this year that we have budgeted is County Road 2 in Morrisburg. So uh, it's a county project, but South Dundas is participating and some costs are going to be there. So we are we will be billing South Dundas and receiving their share as uh, revenue. So that's where some of that increase is there. Uh, this year, and, and Rebecca talked about it yesterday, so I'm not going to get into it too much, but uh, we are strategically using a bunch of reserves. Not only do we have to complete some carryover work, uh, but we've got some reserves that we've put away that we're using this year to offset some of our major expenses uh, in capital projects. Uh, on the funding side, we are budgeting to use the ICIP program for Morseburg, and that's uh, $2.5 million that we received for that project. Uh, we have some increased revenue from the gas tax that we receive on an annual basis. Basis, excuse me. Uh, OSIF funding remains unchanged for the county, and uh, we are budgeting to finish up using the SIF funding to offset the regional waste management project. Now, getting into uh, the 2021, excuse me, 2020, 2021 uh, budget for operations. Uh, we are proposing a slight increase compared to 2020 budget values. And just to just to kind of give some context to this part of our transportation department, uh, that's everything that the patrols do, essentially. We, that's, we're talking about the patching, the sweeping, the culvert repairs and replacement, catch basin cleaning, guide rail repairs, ditching, tree removal, shouldering, uh, plowing. So everything that's being done under the patrols is really budgeted under the operations um, budget and I'll uh, provide council with some some details on some of those major cost drivers in the operations uh, budget in 2021. Uh, one increase we see in 2021 or proposing in 2021 is just to increase our shoulder maintenance budget. Um, that's really going to allow us to do some more shouldering with uh, with our piece of equipment that we bought several years ago, the shoulder spreader. As we continue to use it, we find we are getting much more efficient with it and actually are able to accomplish much more with incremental more money in our uh, available to us. So um, we are proposing a slight increase in shoulder maintenance to be able to actually just get a lot more shouldering done uh, this year. In mowing, brushing, and roadside maintenance, uh, we are proposing an increase, and that's uh, this is something we discussed a couple of uh, meetings ago with respect to guide rail. Uh, so we're proposing an increase to accommodate the hiring of additional students, and uh, what that will allow us to do is improve the hand trimming efforts at guide rails and signs throughout the county. Um, what that does is it really allows us to minimize the guide rail spraying that we had done last year. Uh, I, I do want to stress it doesn't completely eliminate it. There are some locations where, and, and I don't have those in front of me at this moment, but that is information I'll give back to Council in, at a later date. Um, but it does allow us to minimize the guide rail spraying that, that we would need to do to maintain vegetation at the guide rails. Uh, it is something we discuss at budget option because it is an increase in the service level and it's something Council wanted to circle back back to uh, budget time. So we have included it in our base budget to hire those additional students to be able to do that enhanced kind of trimming. And, and that was uh, something they're going to be focused on all summer long as those students will be focused exclusively on guide rail trimming. Um, in the operations budget where we had proposed a slight increase on the painting and specialty marking to account for several items. But uh, as I talked about yesterday during the regular meeting, the cost came in less than expected. So, um, and I've included this as an option, although it's not in the draft budget report that council had just given the timing of when the tender came in, uh, we can reduce that by 45,000. Although we did have a discussion yesterday, whether it was worthwhile or if we wanted to just maintain the existing budget and and continue to accomplish as much as we can with that uh, painting and specialty marking. So we'll leave that for council's discussion at the op whenever we talk about options. In plowing and spreading, uh, we uh, we budget our plowing and spreading based on historical trends and contract costs. Um, I want to point out this winter so far has been one of the uh, it's an anomaly this winter. Just uh, it, we've had uh, le we've required less effort than we normally do uh, at, by this point in the year. Although the past a uh, couple days has uh, has made us feel differently, and we know that there is another storm coming this week. But uh, for us, it's been it's been a quiet winter. So so in terms of how we're going to probably end up by the end of 2021 uh, right now it looks good but of course one of the advantages of budgeting based on a calendar year is that you actually hit two winters uh, during that that uh, that budget year so not only are we accounting for what we're dealing with for the rest of this year but if 
we're also going to hit the first part of next year. So there is some advantage to budgeting on calendar when winter is over two budget seasons. Um, I do want to point out, I've, I've chatted with some of my colleagues across uh, Eastern Ontario and um, the one gentleman I was ch chatting with from Lennox and Addington, you know, they were saying how this has been one of their busiest winters so far, just the way that uh, ice rain and they've had a lot of ice rain and, and winter events that required some significant efforts um, in winter maintenance. But for us, it's been it's been completely different and that's only two and a half hours down the 401. So interesting to hear how people, uh, you know, again, that ge ge geography really plays a part in how much uh, how busy we are in a winter. Uh, winter maintenance materials, uh, I'm pleased to report again with our uh, tendered unit rates, we're able to decrease the the um, the amount of, uh, or I guess the, the expense associated with salt, uh, just given what we annually purchase. Uh, again, and we're, we continue to, as I showed the picture of the anti-icing unit that we've purchased, we're going to, we continue to experiment with that and, and using that technology and monitoring and, and, and you know, looking to expand it. Uh, in the future as well. So those are those are the kinds of best practices we continue to work work towards and in, in trying to uh, reduce the amount of salt we're using. Uh, now getting to the the meat and potatoes of of the program, uh, resurfacing and capital works, and this is where we spend a lot of money, and this is what I think the public, you know, sees in terms of the work we're doing. Uh, so what I'm going to describe below is what is included in the budget. So if council looks wants to make changes or add, if you if you don't hear of a project that um, I guess that was expected to be in there or or another project that uh, that council has had as as a project of interest, if it's not described, it's not included in the 2021 budget, and we have to I guess we will during the options phase of of this discussion have a have a chat about how how we get to where council wants to go with with the budget. So in uh, resurfacing for 2021, uh, again, I just want to remind council, we have been following the recommendations of our uh, asset management plan for our roadways. It's uh, we do it on a four year cycle. So we look at roads, we evaluate those roadways and we uh, we create a plan based on the available amount of money we have. Uh, so it's a budget based asset management plan. And we look to optimize, we try and find the best return on investment based on the budget we have available for us. So if council wants to, um, at some point in that strategic plan, increase significantly the amount of money we have in our resurfacing, uh, then we can we can kind of apply that to our asset management plan and it can cascade out and provide us with a, with a, with a program based on whatever budget uh, council Council deems appropriate. So we've, uh, you know, we we set this plan out in 2018 based on what, uh, you know, I guess the historical budget expenditures we've had, and based on uh, historical unit rates. So uh, when unit rates fluctuate, again, it does have an impact on our ability to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Um, it's uh, so we're we're. I guess actually I'll just get right into it. So in terms of what we are proposing in 2021, we've uh, I've provided this uh, this slide or excuse me this this table in the detailed budget report. The the work is consistent with the four year resurfacing plan that's in front of council. It's based on roads that are deemed best return on investment. So they're not at the they haven't deteriorated to the point where they are going to be, uh, I guess, that they don't deteriorate anymore. A road can goes through a, a complete deterioration over its life cycle from brand new to uh, a piece of garbage. So these are roads, again, whenever you're looking at best return on investment, you're trying to get it before it's a piece of garbage. You're, you're trying to get it at that point where it's in bad enough shape that you need to do something, but it's not so bad that you need to do more than just the resurface or a recycle or a pulverize and resurface. So that's what this is all based on. Um, I do want to point out a couple things. County Road 45, which is included here, that's the uh, bypass road around Alexandria. The work that's proposed in the 2021 resurfacing program will bring that up to a full load um, standard. So that means that um, even though it's not the entire roadway, it's just a 1.3 kilometer piece of it. Once that work is done, we do not need to have a load restriction on that piece of roadway. Uh, that being said, the rest of the roadway does require it just based on its current strength. So it's not 
you know, I wouldn't, it's not prudent to lift it, but it's, I guess, prudent to understand that we're working towards uh, bringing that road up to that standard where we can have full, uh, full loads on it, which will give us a lot of flexibility during this brig load season um, on how we want to manage uh, heavier commercial traffic in the Alexandria area. Uh, a couple other points to note too, uh, the, there's a couple pieces on County Road 18 that are small pieces. Um, you know, if council's looking for flexibility in terms of what uh, this year's program, uh, we are doing, and, and I'm specifically talking in South Dundas, and I'm not trying to throw South Dundas under the bus here, uh, but we are doing some work in South Dundas next year. So if there's a thought that we want to reallocate some funds, you know, there are some options there, although they're not included in my uh, detailed analysis, there are some options if council wants to discuss that a little bit further. Also included in the 2021 uh, capital or resurfacing budget, excuse me, is $450,000 of microsurfacing this year. Uh, we're looking actually at doing microsurfacing really in the west part of the county. So on County Road 41, 31, and 13 are the, the uh, three main areas. Uh, we also had, uh, per council's direction, included $100,000 in crack sealing. Um, the typical budget request that we put in uh, for council is $200,000, but as you may recall, whenever we awarded that tender, we had excellent unit rates provided by the contractor. So um, council's direction was to reduce the draft budget to reflect what the tender value was and then include as an option to bring it back up to normal value. So that's, uh, you'll see that as an option. So an option is uh, spend another $100,000 and, and really get a lot more crack sealing done at, at a good price. Uh, in Capital Works itself, uh, there are, we kind of split it up into ongoing activities and then roads and bridge projects. So on the ongoing activities, these are projects that just kind of continue, they're, they're kind of strategic projects that uh, help to inform bigger, larger projects that aren't necessarily related to one specific section of roadway. So this year, as we normally do, we are proposing to do traffic counting throughout the county, and uh, that's just a really good asset management um, uh, I guess a, a piece of information that helps us with asset management. Understanding where, where the traffic volumes are, changing traffic volumes, amount of truck traffic, that's all stuff that we get out of our traffic counting program. Um, we are, we are, we do have to do bridge inspections this year, so we are budgeting for that. Uh, we talked during our last meeting about the storm sewer um, asset management, um, I guess, analysis and, and program that we need to do. And so we're budgeting $100,000 for that this year. Uh, we do intend to, or we have applied for some funding to try and actually get some more money and, and really try and accomplish much more in that uh, storm sewer inspection program. But it is, a, it is a program that we expect that will continue on for several years as we, as we build our inventory of storm sewers and get into a program of, of, of hammering that those storm sewer is doing a good evaluation of its condition and then working towards uh, creating replacement plans for those things. In the uh, getting ready uh, part of the capital works budget, uh, we do have $7,000 uh, set aside for miscellaneous land purchases. And, and a great example of when we needed that last year was uh, we had to purchase a little bit of land on County Road 34 and 43 in Alexandria just to be able to uh, provide the widening for the new traffic signals. Uh, we also budget for in-house engineering and design and that's when our internal inspection staff, um, they aren't assigned to a specific project but rather doing something um, more general. For example, if we are uh, doing some road inspections, it's not necessarily related to a, a single project but rather just something more general to support the operation of, of or I guess the delivery of capital works. Uh, under road specific projects, we are finishing up the uh, County Road 34 Alexandria EA. Uh, we are expecting to present the findings of that EA uh, in March to Council, so I'll uh, look forward to that and I won't sp spend too much time here. Uh, just I guess the, the message that I want to convey to Council is even though we're budgeting, it shows a $70,000 budget this year, it is carry carried over from last year. It's an ongoing uh, study, so the, the funding for this is coming from reserves. A uh, big project or a big, I guess, investment that we've proposed in the 2021 Capital Works project this year is uh, in, in putting some money into County Road 22. And when I say putting money into County Road 22, I'm not saying we're going to have shovels on the ground in 2021, but rather 
uh, starting to put money aside, but also having money available for staff to start working on the preliminary design, uh, working on appraisals and potentially property uh, road widenings and uh, property acquisitions. So as council may recall last year, we budgeted to do the topo and legal survey, which has been done. Um, we want to continue that and, and start and continue to move this project forward. This is an example of a road that's not a road we can resurface and it's a road that actually requires some significant um, some significant work in terms of uh, we need to widen it. We'll probably need to relocate ditches. Um, there's all sorts of drainage work that needs to be done here. So it's a, it's a major multi-million dollar project and we need to start, uh, you know, from staff's perspective, we need to start saving up to be able to do it. So investing a lot of money this year, uh, our, pl our plan is to invest, put some money into it this year, have that gives us money that continue allows us to continue to work towards getting getting this project ready um ideally you know in a perfect world we'll be at a position next year where again we invest some significant dollars on it we have a good understanding of a preliminary design we can work through detailed design next year and maybe deliver this project in 2022 or excuse me 2023 and by doing you know kind of taking these steps we've built we've built a, a a war chest that we can actually hit this hit this project with so we don't get hit with a major expense in 2023 or whenever council deems it appropriate to to fund this program or this project uh 2021 uh, other work that we were planning to do so we are uh, this was a project we had intended to do last year was the signals at county road 34 and county road 43 uh coming from reserves uh, unfortunately the challenge we had here which i think i know as a as a homeowner who's who does tinkers with home improvements um I was unable to get a lot of electronic uh, electrical components so things like breakers and and, and whatnot I, I struggled with that this year and uh, that was exactly what our contractor had trouble with here too is procuring some of those um, those elect electrical components that were needed to assemble the cabinet so uh, they have all that that and it came to a point when they finally had it it was too late in the season we said you know what let's we've got the money for it let's hold off let's do it in 2021 when the weather we're not we're not chasing or fighting the weather so uh, the work's ready to go we have all the equipment we need and uh, it'll be done in 2021 paid for from from reserves uh, another project we're proposing to do this year is county road 18 at black creek uh, and the challenge here and i've mentioned this to council last year when we budgeted some funds towards it last year we did a geotechnical analysis so we've got a couple of options in terms of how to stabilize the bank here and i know the pi the pictures don't really do it justice but the uh, the challenge we see here is that we are getting some subsidence of that bank and we want to stabilize it so we are using some money from reserves we're adding a little bit more money into it and we're proposing to do a stabilization this year St. Andrews West is a project that Council agreed to include in our draft budget and what this work is is really uh, our our resurfacing program includes a piece of County Road 18 between the limit of St. Andrews West so the east limit of St. Andrews West to County Road 20 um, and South Stormont is interested in replacing sidewalks within St. Andrews West so um, what we had proposed was that we would come in and do the uh, try and work together with with South Stormont and fix the roadway, fix the sidewalks, fix the drainage in here, and get out of there so that we don't interrupt people uh, again in a couple of years' time. Um, so our budgeted scope of work includes the paving, the replacement of the sidewalks, uh, replacement of curbs, uh, driveway culverts, repairs, some storm sewer repairs, ditching improvements, and uh, it's going to tie in nicely with the work, like I said, that we're completing east. Um, at the end of the day, we're going to walk out of there. We're going to have a very clean project, and I think a project that we have nothing to, you know, is very... Um, is is going to be money well spent uh, i do include an option because council did want to talk about if we wanted to fill in more ditches and and, and potentially have some more ditch filling uh, so there is an option and I'll, I'll hit that whenever we talk about option to add more money into this project to uh, to enhance the work but I, I guess what i'm suggesting is the work that's proposed right now uh, under this seven hundred thousand dollars is is a, is a viable and, and realistic and and will will provide significant improvements to this area I won't spend much time on this project. We we did talk about this one quite a bit. I know it's a, it's a big project, but we are, you know, I guess 
the message that I want to deliver to council is that we still intend to deliver this this year and we're in the redesign phase at this point. So um, we're 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 hopeful or not hopeful. We are working towards having a tender ready for early spring and have this awarded uh, and constructed by the end of this construction season. Other capital works programs, uh, although it's not a road related pro project, it is uh, something that we're leading the regional waste management study. And that's uh, again, coming from not only reserves, um, local municipalities have contributed to this work and we are uh, using money from the efficiency review fund to offset the cost of this. Uh, we're at a point where we're actually ready to to present some of those phase one and phase two findings to council. So um, I guess just, the the point I wanted to make here is that we're intending to finish this work this year and uh, and and I look forward to having a more detailed discussion with council on this one whenever we're in a position to actually talk in great detail about the findings and next steps and, and things like that. Uh, this is an example Kenny Road 18 between uh, or excuse me, County Road 8 between the east and west leg of County Road 18. This is a, a, a road we've talked about a couple times in front of council and, and now we've brought it to and have included it in our draft budget. And really it's because it's it's reached that point where it needs to be done. We can't we can't defer or delay this anymore. It's a now need and and it's a need that um, it's, it's a necessary project. <clears throat> um, just for context, for those that maybe aren't uh, don't remember us talking about it in the past, uh, it's a very frost susceptible section of roadway. So what we're going to see in the next month or so is this road becomes almost impassable because of the the frost heaving. And every year that you don't do something about it, it gets worse and worse. And the asphalt continues to break apart and, and is end, ends up in deteriorated condition. So what we're proposing to do with this budget is actually do a um, a rehab similar to what we did in County Road 1 at South Mountain, which is improve the drainage, add some stone, and then uh, pave pave the roadway on top of it. So we're, I think we've got a good good project ahead of us here, and we look forward to doing it. Um, it does uh, it does lead to a, maybe a greater question in terms of what we want to do with respect to roads like this, where it's not included in the four-year resurfacing plan. It's a it's considered to be a now need. So, i.e., it's not deteriorating any, you know, it's it's deteriorated to the point where it just keeps getting slowly worse and worse every year. But it but it only becomes like a a necessary project when it reaches that point where we we absolutely have to do something. So, there's this like an interesting, I guess, an interesting piece of uh, we have interesting roadways uh, that that fall into this category where it hasn't deteriorated to the point where it's absolutely absolutely necessary, but. Um, but are are there and we need to do something about them. So I, I look forward to having a little bit more of a discussion on that topic. And I have, I know, kind of individually discussed some of these types of projects with uh, with councils uh, or with council members in the past. So maybe, you know, a good discussion about this is, is worthwhile at this point. Um, other capital works, uh, the Winchester Storm Sewer, and that's the uh, that's in support or in partnership with the Wellings of Winchester project. Uh, just an example of a project they actually did most of the work last year. It's just not complete yet, and we haven't received our bill. So we're instead of kind of paying for it out of another budget, we've taken the money from last year that was left over and put it into uh, put it to its own specific project. So we have the funds available for uh, to offset the cost that uh, that we're going to incur here. Uh, we're finishing up the County Road 5 hydrological analysis. This is this is not a picture of oceanfront property. This is actually County Road 5. So um, this is what we have to fix before we fix the roadway is how do we, how do we accommodate this type of seasonal flooding? And this is something that happens uh, not every year, but every you know, three to four years where we see the roadway impassable because of, of spring flooding. And what the way this will this will play out is very similar to how uh, County Road 22, you know, in my mind, how I'd want to deliver or how we're planning to deliver County Road 22. So we get the hydrological analysis done, then we start uh, putting money into survey, and then we start putting money aside into actually reconstructing the roadway. So build building building our war chest so we can actually get this work done and get it done right. Other capital works included in the budget is the Brinston storm sewer lining. So uh, storm sewers on County Road 16 and Brinston reached the end of their useful life. And instead of digging up the roadway, uh, what we're proposing is actually doing a full cured in place lining of those pipes. Uh, on top of that, we do have a couple minor drainage um, 
drainage issues that we want to fix up uh, at the same time, uh, namely um, in front of the, you know, near the general store. There's a couple areas where the curb line is not perfect and we, and we need to improve some of the uh, drainage there. So we've got, uh, the, our budget includes all of those things to try and correct all the drainage issues we see in Brinston. Uh, moving to bridges, uh, I'll briefly go through what's included in the capital works this year. Uh, we're proposing to replace the MP municipal drain, and this is on County Road 13, where we are paving this year. Uh, concrete box culvert really has reached the end of its useful life. And what we're proposing to do is replace that box culvert with a the similar box culvert. And I'm happy to report we have our, already, just based on our, with our budget we had last year, we were able to pre-purchase that box culvert. So we're ready to go. It's in the contractor's yard. It's just a matter of getting the getting the con the box culvert delivered on site and installed. So we're able to do it in advance of our paving work. On um, County Road 43, we're proposing to replace the Moriarty Municipal Drain. We did have this budgeted last year. Um, instead of actually getting it done last year, if I'm being honest, we wanted to get a second opinion of the work because it is a significant roadway. Uh, County Road 43, just outside or in between Finch and, and Chesterville. We were, we were questioning whether a complete replacement was necessary or if a rehabilitation was possible. Uh, but uh, in, in the detailed look at it, we did confirm that yes, a complete replacement is required. So that's what we budgeted for and, and want to accomplish this year. Uh, we're proposing uh, to include a budget for the Lakeshore Drive design. So this is the culvert that we have committed to replace on Lakeshore Drive as part of the transfer of that roadway. And we're proposing to do the design this year, get a detailed cost estimate together this year, construction in 2021, or excuse me, 2022. Uh, big bridge project proposed for this year is the McPhee Bridge at $1.375 million, and that's a full rehabilitation. Um, small, uh, I guess, uh, stable stabilization work that we're proposing this year is the Boundary Road Bridge at $150,000. And this is just a, a, a rehab that's going to give us a holding strategy and that'll extend the life of this bridge. It's not, the bridge itself is not in horrible shape. It's just there's some challenges with respect to its design and, and the inherent, um, um, I guess, the risks associated with that design as it reaches the end of its service life. Uh, the big bridge project we're proposing in 2021 is the CPR grade separation in Winchester. And we're budgeting just shy of one and a half million dollars for that work this year. Um, one of the challenges we have, and I just want to bring this to council's attention, is that we are struggling to get confirmation that we can get uh, flagging services because we are working underneath the tracks. So we are uh, diligently working with CP to try and secure that, um, the flagging that we need to be able to do this work this year. And we've been, it's not something we just started to try. It's been ongoing for some time. Um, I'm pleased to actually uh, note that uh, our MP, um, our MP Eric Duncan had, you know, taken a look at our budget and had had reached out to me and said, if there's any support he can provide, he'd be happy to provide. So uh, depending on how the next couple of weeks play out, quite frankly, we might be uh, leaning on uh, or, or politely asking uh, our MP to to help us out to, to get the flagging done so we can get this work done this year. Because if we can't get flagging, then it's it's a project that just can't get done. Uh, a bunch of small design uh, budgets that we're proposing this year. Um, they're listed there and if there's any questions about any of them I'm happy to answer them but it's really this is just to get ready for 2022-2023 work and we do have some minor work to finish at Chrysler Bridge nothing related to the surface but just some underneath work that needs to be cleaned up that we weren't able to finish uh, with the weather this year and the last thing with respect to uh, bridges that I wanted to bring to council's attention. We've budgeted 180,000 for miscellaneous repairs. And uh, what that would include, and I'm showing some pictures here of work we did actually last year. And this is thanks to, you know, I had alluded to having, you know, the advantage of having someone like Mike on staff. Uh, one of the things he's been working on is creating a standard detail for culvert and repairs. And, and this is an example of one that staff did last year as a little bit of a test on County Road 25. So whenever we have a deteriorated culvert end what will happen is we see shoulder subsidence and then of course that culvert end continues to deteriorate to the point where it's in the guide rail or it creates a major safety concern. The rest of the structure itself, and, and this is very common uh, with our structures, the rest of that, of that bridge is in good shape. So if we can actually 
put something on the end of it to cap it and hold it for it to let the rest of the bridge catch up to the deterioration of the end, then we've actually extended the overall life of that structure. So um, this is something, you know, 180,000 is going to allow us to do uh, a few of these types of repairs and uh, we'd either be doing it. This was done in house. It's either an in house type of job or we find a small day labor crew that can do it because it's kind of in and out work. It's not. It's not technically challenging to do. It just takes time and materials to do it. Uh, last thing with respect to uh, capital works is our reserve transactions. And we're looking to, again, put money into uh, Lakeshore Drive to be able to uh, have that paid, you know, I guess money in the bank to be able to pay for that work without hitting a budget. Um, uh, putting 60,000 into equipment reserve and 175,000 into the building reserve. And that's something we've been doing on an annual basis just to prepare us for the eventual replacement of our salt storage facilities. Uh, we've been contributing 150,000 a year, but uh, last year council, you know, uh, supported the notion of adding some extra, which will allow us to um, uh, save up for the tarp replacements because the tarp similar to a shingle on a building, uh, it's just going to be something we need to replace on a we'll call it a regular basis. I'll continue on unless the warden wants me to stop. Uh, in terms of equipment and housing, uh, we are budgeting kind of typical operating expenses and that's based on our historical cost to operate our fleet and the, uh, that, uh, that entire expense includes repairs and all the fuel expenses we have. Um, our rental recovery that you see in our budget is really just us whenever we use a plow we charge it to that activity and there's a cost you know we charge we essentially charge ourselves rental um and that's a, that's a way we can keep track of, of how much we're spending and how we compare to um, private industry and uh, so the way we budget is trying to budget that our rental recovery is offsetting our operating expenses and in most years that that uh, generally pans itself out which suggests that our rental rates and, and whatnot are relatively competitive for what we do um the the fun stuff to talk about is actually the new equipment so we're budgeting for a new snow plow this year and that's been approved by council we have two new three-quarter ton pickups for the patrols that are budgeted and this is all consistent with our equipment replacement uh, program that uh, council would have a copy of that 10-year plan uh, we're planning to replace the loader and finch that loader is over 20 years old and that's the last one we have to replace so we're looking forward to doing that and and actually having all of our loaders in a relatively uh, new state uh, which will kind of satisfy that need for the next 20 plus years uh, moving into AVL equipment. So this is the equipment we use for our um, monitoring our plowing. Again, this is something that's contained in our salt management plan. Uh, we do need to upgrade our equipment. We, our current provider is migrating or actually is ending kind of what service they provide. We have to look for, we're essentially ready to go out to market and the equipment we use right now to kind of link our plows to the internet um, is, is old equipment and needs to be replaced. So we're budgeting a $30,000 AVL upgrade um, to be able to do that across our fleet. And what's, what's great about this project actually is a lot of local municipalities are also at that stage where they're trying to get themselves onto this type of system. Uh, so we're looking at a real joint tender um, and made available to all uh, municipalities and SDG to be able to join into um, to a, to a big tender to be able to upgrade and provide AVL services. Um, for housing, uh, we had some, and Rebecca mentioned this during reserve, the reserve talk yesterday, we have some miscellaneous uh, capital works that, that we want to finish doing some improvements at all our patrol garages. So a picture on the right is showing we actually replaced the floor in St. Andrews last year with that some of that money. Um, and we have 40,000 left over, so we want to continue doing that work. Uh, we also have budgeted the the two-way radio tower project. So that's uh, improvements at the Newington Radio Shack, new tower, and then the equipment for two-way radios in our plows and patrolling equipment. A big project we're proposing for 2021 is microservicing at the patrol yards, and that's uh, budgeted at $170,000. And really, when you take a look at the asphalt that's there, these these patrol yards are reaching that point in their, you know, the asphalt there is reaching that point in its service life where it's time for a ceiling, which will help preserve the asphalt uh, for years to come. 
Uh, the last couple of slides that I'll go through here has to do with uh, overhead administration. So just the operations here within uh, 26 Pitt Street. Uh, our wages reflect the cost of living adjustments and uh, we do have now included the manager of infrastructure position in our wages. Uh, we have a small increase for garages and that's again, that's just kind of the, your hydro bills and, and your heating bills associated with our garages. Uh, we've decreased training meetings and conferences just Given the pandemic, there's no sense in, in asking for more money than we need. Uh, we're not changing the health and, health and safety budget. And I do want to point out that health and safety budget really is related to um, everything excluding COVID. COVID we cover under our COVID funds that we've received from various sources. And we've decreased the office budget and phone advertising and communications budget. And that's just to give a function of we've got good, good cell phone plans. Uh, we're able to use uh, communication platforms like Access E11 and Municipal 511, so it does help to uh, save money in those categories. So with that, I'm into budget options, so I'm not sure, uh, uh, Mr. Warden, if you want me to just go through the budget options or pause there and have a discussion. I think we'll pause there just for a moment. I know uh, I do have a question from uh, a comment from uh, Councillor Byfels, but I'll open it up to any other Members also, again, I can't see everyone. So if anybody wants or has a question, can you just please, oh, there we are. So I will ask uh, Councillor Byfels to uh, ask his question or make a comment. Okay, thank you, Mr. Warden. And um, <clears throat> with your indulgence, and if you uh, feel I'm going too far, just uh, say so and uh, we'll go from there. Um, Dan, I have a, a couple operational questions and then uh, a few uh, uh, capital comments. Um, tree removal budget, um, you can just not jot these down. Um, as you know, the ash trees are dying along the county roads. I know that um, there's a stretch <clears throat> between my farm on 31 that there's a significant amount that have to be removed someday. So that's something that I think you have to keep in mind. Um, the shouldering is a good thing that uh, the counties have been doing. Uh, however, uh, uh, you may have to take work a little bit better on the entrances. I know we had a discussion last year about uh, um, including farm entrances and making sure that they're leveled off uh, and dealt with. Um, going to capital, um, I will first say that uh, the, the 2021 road plan is a good plan. I actually drove 245 kilometers of roadway on Saturday to inspect all the 90% of the roads, I did not go up to 23 and didn't do 45, but I did most of them. Um, they are in that two, three range as, as the, the plan says that we should do them. Um, I will make a comment on 22. 22 west of Maxville certainly is a good place to start investing some money and getting that ready. 22 east of Maxville is terrible. Um, I will leave it up to the North Langarians to deal with that, but I, I was, I was rather amazed at how poor shape it was in. So one of those now roads, but um, N18 uh, going west of Osenbrook Center, there were some issues even past what we have to do, but overall, you know, we still have a, a good county road network and I think the, the plan works real well. Um, I will suggest to Ben and I have already discussed this with him that the two legs in Dundela and, and Blainsburg could wait till next year. Um, I would set that money aside and make sure you wouldn't have to deal with it next year, but uh, um, to put that together with the road work in 16 and 7 in 2022 makes a lot more logical sense. Um, a great big thank you for 818. Um, yes, it's uh, well beyond its uh, uh, useful life. I know that there's more issues going further south on, on 8, but uh, getting this chunk done as will be a good start and maybe planning for the next one would be good. Um, the Lakeshore culvert, um, I drive over it probably once a day right now. It's it's not an issue, but I haven't been inspecting it. And I and I do ask that you note that with your crews that if they if your road supervisor goes by that he may have at least a peek once in a while because uh, or work with our director to make sure that Culvert has in is still good to go. I understand that it's got, you know, structurally it's there, but I don't want a, a major issue happening that we could have uh, at least watched. But I, it certainly can wait. Um, 
The other discussions that I've had with Ben, and I'm not sure when the, the good time to bring it up is, is the now roads, the roads that aren't on our plan, but are, are still need to be dealt with someday, some way, somehow. Um, we all have them. I can number a bunch in South Dundas, but I think to be fair, we all have roads what, that uh, they're in the two, the one categories. And, you know, I believe the asset management plan works like you take care of the roads that aren't totally destroyed and don't worry about the rest, but someday you have to deal with the rest. And um, <clears throat> uh, in discussions uh, with Ben, uh, I've come up with a, an idea that I'd like to put on the council table um, I, that will allow us to put money aside every year to deal with the now roads in the next budget year. Uh, so that doesn't mean go and do things this year unless there's some found money and we haven't got it yet. But we every year we tend to have extra money left from tenders. We have extra money left from road works and projects, not, not including bridges. And if we take that money and put it aside, put it in reserve, um, when counties go to the next budget, Ben can have this list of roads that are not part of our plan, but are in dire need that uh, at least do something with. And that way it's, uh, We've done real well in saving money for the manors. That's great, but what's our own project? What's a project that we should look at? And that's, I consider that the now roads, the 31s, the, the fives, the eights, the 22s, whatever you want to do. Um, it allows uh, us as a county to deal with what we need to deal with and have the money set aside. So. Um, I did make a, a motion up. Uh, Kimberly has it, and I would like to put that on the floor right now. And maybe we can have. I don't know if we, since I've stole the limelight first, but I think at least I want it on the floor so at least you know what I'm talking about. And if we need to, uh, I'll leave it up to Ward when he wants to debate it. If he wants to debate it now or debate it after we get done through uh, um, the rest of the discussion period. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, I think maybe we'll we'll discuss it now since it's a since it's a topic that everybody's hearing uh, in in regards to your conversation. So I'll ask Kimberly to uh, read the motion, and then if there's questions or comments in respect of it, then we can take them at that time. Moved by Councillor Bivell, seconded by Councillor Gardner, that the Council of the United Counties of Stormont, Dundas, and Glengarry direct staff to develop a policy for the transfer of any unspent funds from road reconstruction and improvement projects, excluding bridges, and any surpluses other than unfinished or specific projects generated by the Roads Division of the Transportation and Planning Services Department at year end to a reserve dedicated to major road reconstruction projects for now need roads that are not included within the current four year resurfacing plan. And that staff create and annually update a list of these high priority roads based on their age, condition, shovel readiness, and construction costs so that council can util utilize the major road reconstruction reserve to authorize the rehabilitation of any road in a budget year. Okay, thank you. I'll open it up to comments or questions. Councillor uh, Williams. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, <clears throat> I, I think uh, Councillor Bivels has come up with a, a, a great potential solution here. Um, so I'd, I'd certainly support, um, you know, where he's going, because uh, and and again, I, and I'd also like to compliment uh, um, Ben Dehan. You, you know, you you really do um, manage your your departments well. Um, I have great confidence in in the work that you're you're doing there. Very well organized. Um, but again, I, I I do believe that uh, we do need to put some a plan together for these now need roads and and I guess that's my one of my questions with regards to um, uh, county road uh, 30 um, and the the planned resurfacing for that because I know that uh, as soon as that happens I'm going to get the question now this is a road that goes from county road 22 towards Dunvegan um, and you know if you drive the road 
for sure people are going to say, well, it's by far not the worst road in North Glengarry. Uh, and all you have to do is go the other direction to go south and you'll discover a section of road there. And it's just a section. It's not the whole piece that is actually in some areas probably dangerous because the road falls off at the edge and it's kind of collapsed along the edge there. And so that's very difficult to explain that to the taxpayer when they say, what are you doing resurfacing, you know, the road going, uh, that piece of road going north, and yet that there's, there's a section going south that is, that is really terrible. So, um, you know, maybe you can enlighten me on that then. Go ahead, Mr. Don. Yes, thank you. Um, and thank you for your compliments. I. I just want to reiterate, I'm just the pretty face of this department. It's the staff that uh, that, that do the good work um, that, that you get to see, and I, I get the fortune of, of presenting it to you. Um, but, uh, you know, the, that really, the, the, the phenomenon or the or the issue you raise, uh, Councillor uh, Williams, is essentially we we can't do worse first. If we get stuck doing the, those worst first roads, so the roads that if it starts to fall off, we can't just resurface it. We got to spend some money digging up pieces of that roadway, and that that like that cost of actually doing that kind of work can get cost prohibitive, and it reduces your ability to do the other work. So we've got to very similar to the video I showed you yesterday of the shingles when the shingles just start to fall off now's the right time to do it to do the to do the roof because the, the wood underneath hasn't been rotten yet and it's the same thing for a roadway so if you're catching that roadway just when those shingles start to fall off just when those cracks are really widening up and the, the ride starts to get a little bit worse then you you can get in there do do a good job you can do something that's going to make that road last forever because if we went in and did the same thing on a, on a piece of roadway where you know we have that rut or you have that issue and we didn't fix what's underneath it then we really we're just we're just going to see that problem happen again so that's that's really the difference between the two and that's the challenge we have on county road 22 as well uh that be you know east of maxville is that that road has really kind of fallen off if i'm being frank with you fallen off a cliff on us and we need to spend some some good money there and and now you know what it's great the the water line's been installed on, on the side of the roadway there's no expectation anything else is going to be happening there but chances are just just the you know bringing the paver out and paving over top of that roadway is not going to cut it we have to spend you know do some ditching maybe do some reconstruction in certain areas so those are the kinds of things where and to councillor byveld's point and and what what he's proposed which i certainly uh, you know 100 percent agree with because that's the kind of thing i need uh where i sit is some good direction and some some good understanding of how we're funding some of these prog projects and how we can get to it so um i hope that answers your question i i, I tried my best yeah, thank you, Ben. If I may, Mr. Warden. Um, uh, yeah, no, I, I understand the, the strategy behind it. It's the taxpayers that don't. And, and it's very difficult to explain that. I'm just wondering if there's any way that we can um, involve our communications officer uh, in this issue um, in, in order to, um, to, to, you know, to send out, uh, I don't know, uh, whether it be press releases or, or mailings or whatever, to kind of explain the strategy so that, you know, we're not caught. So we're being proactive uh, with, with the people to, to, to help them understand what, why we're doing what and when. Um, and, just, and then lastly, I think the 22, that really deteriorated after the, uh, the water project and, and, and the work that was done on the shoulders there. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be one of those roads that, that uh, Councillor Bivels is talking about. One quick last question: the the regional ma uh, waste strategy. Um, uh, we, Jamie and I have some fellow councillors that are chomping at the bit uh, to to get. They're they're wanting to have this conversation now, um, uh, and and I think to some extent the same things happening in South Glengarry because we're going to be having a joint meeting, and and our councillors are really wanting to talk about this. So when are we going to be able to get this in front of County Council and then in front of our councillors? If I'm being honest with you, what I would love to do, and maybe maybe I can get a thumbs up from Council if they agree with this, and, and I've kind of 
briefly spoken to, to Kimberly about this as well, um, is try and get similar to how we've done some of our like SDG kind of uh, summit training and try and get everybody in the same room, whether it's virtually or um, <coughs> physically and actually go through it together so that everybody hears the same thing at the same time. That That's what I, that'd be my preference. And, and certainly if I welcome council's feedback, if you want to hear it separately at county council versus locally, but in my view, Let's get everybody together in the same room and and have that discussion so that you can hear kind of what what this is you know what kind of fruits being born from this study. It's an excellent idea. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I'll go to Councillor Gardner, please. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Warren Prevo. Um, yeah, I uh, I think that uh, the solution that uh, Councillor Byveltz has put on the table um, is. Uh, uh, a, a very creative way to stop us from having this uh, road conversation where the ones that we want to get to just kind of go off into the abyss. And, um, you know, to Karma's point, uh, you know, Ben, you do a fabulous job at managing with your staff, with your team, um, the way that you do things. And there has been times where there's been some savings and it would be wonderful to be able to capitalize on that and get more done. Um, I think that's fabulous. And uh, I also agree with uh, Councillor Williams' comment about communication and, um, you know, just, just kind of... Uh, educating in a, a kind of a, a, a fun way, if you want, about some of those uh, issues that are hard to, to explain. But I, I think, Ben, you and your staff have such a great grasp on it, you'd be able to put it into words that would make sense uh, that folks could actually have something to work with. So uh, love the, the solution uh, for this conversation. It sounds like there's a couple of really good working ones. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Laundry. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Horton. Uh, in regards or comments made by uh, by Councillor Weinfeld, I I fully support any unused funds are uh, to reallocate it and to look at the nows. Uh, my only thing is we have the asset management plan, we have the the four year plan, or as you maybe call it, and there's the nows that were brought up. I don't know if it's something where we revisit that plan and restructure our demand of our needs with what is in fact the need. So I'm not as well versed on all of our county roads when when you go too far, especially to the uh, to the east. But to get a, a sense, I don't know if it's something to bring back the nows that that Councillor Byveld was bringing up, so I can get a better sense of okay, this is what the, so to veer off from our four year plan. And re add. So I don't know if it's something to to uh, revisit the asset management plan and maybe restructure another four years with adding the nows in with the, uh, the needs and the, and the nows. So uh, as far as the comments made in regards to Ben and, and uh, the department, I think they do a wonderful job. Ben, you bring the, the, the message across wonderfully. The only comment made here is the pretty face. I think we can do better. <laughs> But uh, no, I don't know. Maybe here are some, some other comments. Maybe Ben, give your uh, take on this. Right, Mr. Don. Yeah, thank you. And and it's uh, I, like I see the four-year plan almost in, independent of what we're talking about here. And and I don't mean that it's 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 somewhat independent in that we you know that four-year plan is really bait, like we've got. We're hitting the the best return on investment if we spend our money wisely. Not that we're not spending money wisely elsewhere, but that's where we can spend our money the the wisest and get the best return for our dollar we're spending. So that that four year plan I don't see as changing. Um, but but to your point, Councillor Landry, what I would uh, what we would do if if Council agrees uh, with uh, the the resolution or the motion on the table is that we would prepare that list and that, that's going to sit independent, and then it's really up to Council once we have that. You know, I keep referring to the war chest. Once we have that war chest built up, is they can pick off those those that list, and you know, it's something if we're actively monitoring and evaluating those roadways, those are the roads we're going to keep a closer eye on uh, going forward. Um, in in the next kind of four year cycle, those are the roads we keep an eye on, and and we'll kind of monitor their condition, and we'll continue to advise council like, oh, you know, this County Road 22 after the water project, oh my goodness, like that we saw a, a very significant deterioration of that roadway, so you know that that would 
you know, it almost like bumps it up in terms of its like importance and it's how how bad it is and how 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 much more of a priority it becomes so uh, that it, it functions somewhat independent of the four-year resurfacing plan but it's also tied into the four-year resurfacing plan that 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 four-year resurfacing plan would not disappear okay if i may add subsequently so uh thank you because i like i said i'm I'm seeing where the four-year plan is still in place. Uh, so I, I presume, Mr. or uh, Councillor Byveld, are you just basically bringing on where if there's additional funds to speed up the process of looking at the nows? Is that basically what the motion that you're bringing forward? Um, through you, uh, Mr. Warden, yes. Um, as Ben has said, I don't want to touch the four-year plan. It, it has that sense to it that we're, as he said you know you're dealing with the roads that haven't fallen you know have fallen off but not right down to the bottom of their useful life uh <clears throat> but there i want to look at the roads that aren't part of that so once the road gets beyond that and we've determined it's beyond that we've as ben will tell you we've let it go like uh they're still drivable but they're getting to the point that they're not drivable and you have to get them to the point like 818 where literally you can only drive 40 kilometers an hour uh, on a good day in the summer with a trailer on behind so um and that's very specific stretch but uh this is this motion is not intended to take away from the four-year plan or in the next four-year plan because the next four-year plan is the next council's uh prerogative what i what i what we do every time is um Let's say we have a million dollars we saved on our, our on our tender. Then we start looking at uh, spending that money. Instead of spending that money, we put it in uh, the major road reconstruction reserve, along with any other surpluses. And then 2022 budget by then, then we'll have a list of the the now roads that are not part of the four year plan. And he will you know do traffic counts, the condition, um, the viability of doing them, the cost. And then council can, you know, with his advice, council can pick or choose, pick the roads that are worse, but you, then you get the money to do it with. Right now, if I choose a road and say, I want to get 31 done from Morrisburg to Williamsburg, um, Ben's going to say, I don't have the money unless we go to the reserve. It's not part of the budget. We can make it part of the budget next year, or we can make 22 part of the budget next year. Either way, like that, we don't have that. We have a... <clears throat> A road reserve, but we don't have one for those big now projects that we just can't get over the hump of doing and that's the intent of it. Not not taken away from the 4 year plan for sure, or the next 4 year plan. Got it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Is there any other questions or comments in regards to the motion that's on the table? I'll go to Councillor Fraser, then Councillor McGillis. Thank you, Mr. Warden uh, and. Uh, I understand the concept of Councillor Byveld's motion, uh, and uh, I agree we need to have, as uh, Mr. Hahn comments, a war chest. But my concern is, um, will the war chest be large enough to look after some of these now projects? We uh, and I guess it's directed towards Councillor Byveld's. Um, so we're not saying the war chest or the reserve. Uh, for the major road reconstruction would be the only place to source money. Uh, we will be able to, and I, and I do believe we'll, we'll have to dip into reserves or make it a budget item uh, when I think of these uh, these now projects. And um, to Councillor Landry's uh, uh, comment, I believe it's his comment, uh, a list of uh, what Ben or what the four-year plan has identified as now projects uh, would be good uh, to Councillor Williams' comment about um, being able to educate or inform uh, our uh, residents and constituents of of projects that are afoot, and be able to describe what a now road is. I think we've all had a lesson in that um, through our our, um, our own councils and our own staff. But uh, my my concern, I guess, uh, question is directed towards Councillor Bybelt. We do agree that we will have to dip into other sources of funding to look after now roads if uh, and this isn't the only way to fund now roads. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Through you, Mr. Warden. Uh, yeah. Council Fraser, uh, I guess the classic example of, you know, if you get bonus money, that's something you can consider. But, you know, 43 Chester, Winchester, we did a couple of years ago. 
um, that was a now road that wasn't on any plan and we had, you know, we had the extra federal gas tax money to do it with. Um, I'm not saying we can't dip, dip into other reserves, but right now we have no specific reserve to deal with it with these now roads. And my proposal is, is for staff to bring that policy back. We can certainly debate how we're going to make that policy work. And if we count, it's always council's prerogative to go into the, into our reserve uh, funds one way or the other. And that'd be something that staff would look at at budget time and to see if that's something we can do. And it all depends on, on the year. I think last year we had an opportunity where um, I think there was some surpluses created because of the way everything went. Uh, couldn't do everything, didn't spend as much money. Uh, you could get a year where all of a sudden you're spending a lot more than you ever dreamed of because you, of the circumstances involved. So every year is different, but if we don't start putting money aside for the so-called now roads that are not part of a four-year plan, then we'll never get them done there it, i think in my opinion it's it's something that uh this council can deal with and, and and at least have a good solid footing for the next council that they know that they have money to deal with these roads we're not going to get this money overnight i know that i don't propose to do any now roads this year but i'm hoping to have at least some funds set aside that we can deal with those roads next year and it some of those now roads may work out well within our four year plan. If you're uh, reconstructing one area and you got a now road there, moving equipment is what costs money for those contractors. And if they can just go several kilometers down the road or extend the project into a new now road, then we have the money. Now we don't. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor McGillis. Well, thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, in terms of the um, aggregate royalties, we put that money aside. I mean, we what we do at the township of Selster Mount pretty well. We do it the same formula as the counties in terms of our re reconstruction of our new roads, or the months that are, are need to be done now. That's always put on the back burners. I believe that, and it's the same thing throughout all the municipalities. Because what you said, if you use that roof example in terms of the shingles. Um, but the aggregate royalties that are that are that we collect every year. Last year, I think our township collected around one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. What are we doing with those? Uh, I know we're probably putting them into reserves, but why not put it in the same reserves as what uh, Councillor Bibles is talking about to start fixing the roads that uh, you know we are putting on the back burners? Do you have to yeah, uh, in terms of what we do with the aggregate royalties, we collect about 100,000 as well per year. Like, I think, let me, sorry, I can get the specific number here. Just give me a quick second. Uh, for this year, we're we're anticipating collecting 110,000 or we're budgeting to collect 110,000 this year. And, and that's historically just gone against our operating expenses, like our expenses. So we've never actually put it away to identify a specific budget for for those that revenue that we do get. So um, if council wants to do that, that's something we'll we'll need to kind of change our process on. But uh, certainly we can do that if deemed appropriate. And uh, just to follow up. I would I would support something like that. It's you know it's starting to put something in a in a uh, reserve for these roads that are not being touched uh, that need to be done, like County Road 31, for example. But um, I wanted to talk to about another thing too, not just about this motion, but uh, are we going to talk about some of the other things that Ben brought up earlier in his uh, report, uh, Mr. Warden? Yes, we'll get back into those uh, once he's completed his uh, budget process, but we'll just deal with this motion for now. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Armstrong. Thank you, Warden Prevo. Um, it, it certainly is a, a, a good presentation, Ben, once again. Uh, I do concur with Councillor Landry uh, on the final part as well, but um, uh, as far as the motion from Councillor Bible, I think it's it's uh, very good, uh, very well thought out. It's uh, sensible, and the 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 base thing that everyone I think needs to remember, and I think everybody does know, is uh, that that regardless of the policy, at least it's putting it's it's you know it's creating a savings account for some of these things that we don't get to do, and there is some money at least being dedicated towards that in in theory. 
but council has to remember that at any given time you can supersede any policy if there's something that happens that's awful or something that happens that actually could be good and they just decide to go in a different direction but at least it somewhat trains uh council this council and and the you know hopefully the other councils will stay with it to be mindful of putting away a savings account to, to break it down to the home sort of economics and and that's a good start um rather than as as councillor byvelt's pointed out rather than debating it each year when there's an extra 50 dollars at least put it away and then if something impacts on the roads to throw sd and g you can debate whether or not to take the money from that policy or to not follow that policy for that particular year or that particular amount so there's no real it, 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 again it's a it's a policy that i find easy to support but there's no real uh, um, loss to it it doesn't mean that every single penny just because you make a policy it doesn't mean that you have to take every single penny go oh i, I really think we should fix this bridge but we have this policy i mean the policy will mean nothing more than the paper it's written on if you decide to supersede it so i think it's uh it's well thought out well done by councillor byvelt uh and and appreciate you bringing that to the table i feel fully find it easy to support thank you Okay, thank you. Any other comments in regards to the motion that's on the table? Not seeing none, there was a motion read by uh, our clerk. All in favor of that motion? The motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. Councillor Byfels, for bringing that motion forward. And I presume Mr. Dahan, you will bring a report back at a later date in regards to the policy. I back think we should. Sorry, I, I think we should have the policy, quite frankly, in time for our budget, uh, like approval in March. Uh, the actual listing is something we're going to have to work on through uh, through the next months, but we'll certainly have something prepared for council in advance of 2022 budget for sure. That That's not an issue. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Yes, I just then just uh, echoed what I was what I what I was thinking in terms of timing. So I think that's great. And uh, just on the the communications piece that uh, was brought up by Councillor Williams, I certainly Ben and I and and Kimberly can circle back on that with our communications person Todd and develop some type of strategy that uh, you know is 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 aimed at the public to help them understand how we and and why we do the things we do. So I'll just just said uh, we'll we'll circle back on that aim. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And uh, Mr. Don, if you can carry on with the rest of your budget, please. Uh, yes, thank you. And I'm just, uh, we're at the, the ending of it. And I know, I know everybody's probably happy to hear that. Uh, so really, we're just gonna talk, go, I'll go through the options that we have uh, prepared for council. Uh, just again, these are options from, from staff and, and certainly if council wants to take things in another direction, I'm, you know, obviously we're, we, we, we serve at your pleasure. So we'll, uh, we'll listen and, and have a good discussion. Uh, with respect to different options, uh, option that was presented to Council is increase the crack ceiling budget uh, by $100,000. Uh, again, just to reiterate, we had great unit rates as part of our contract. Uh, this for us uh, is the most cost effective road asset management strategy on the market. Uh, maybe I would liken it to, uh, you know, going up on your roof and putting a little tar on some of the nail heads that get exposed. You know, it's, it's simple. It takes very little time, but actually helps to extend that life of that uh, of that roof and uh and that really just by adding that hundred thousand dollars just returns us back to the 2020 budget levels um if council is looking for some savings uh, we can look to uh bring back guide rail spraying uh i guess comprehensive guide rail script spraying across the county uh the current budget includes forty two thousand dollars extra and that's a service level improvement and and really where that forty two thousand is is coming from is hiring six additional students to exclusively trim through the summer months uh and that i do want to reiterate doesn't uh, completely eliminate the need to spray some of those guide rails that are that are of a major safety concern to us uh but it will will get them the vast majority of guide rail if, if we do continue so the, the budget includes the forty two thousand dollars council can remove it and uh and uh, save for forty two thousand dollars if council is interested in doing some additional enhan enhancements in St. Andrews West, uh, we can do some additional ditch filling just based on some of our preliminary reviews. That would cost about $180,000 or would add $180,000 into the budget. Um, that will uh, essentially allow us to fill about 50% of the ditch on the north side only, uh, which is an enhancement to the existing project. Um, we really, and I do want to reiterate this, if council is looking for complete urbanization, which is curbs and full, full 
kind of urban uh, cross section to that roadway. Uh, that's it's just not feasible for 2021 because we've got to that that requires a complete design top to bottom. Uh, you need your ECA approvals, um, and and it becomes very very costly to do. So for us, we feel if council is looking for an enhancement, or or I guess based on the the direction we got from council, they're looking for some enhancements to it. If council does want to enhance it, uh, we can add 180 thousand dollars in and do uh, certainly a. You know, some more filling and kind of create a little bit more of a better urbanization, but not it's not a full urbanization. Uh, reducing the micro at the patrol garages. So there are some uh, opportunities for savings here. If council does want to reduce some micro surfacing, um, our budget includes all four patrol garages. The asphalt was done at the same time for all four garages. Uh, but I do note that the micro surfacing tender is focused in the west. So if council does want to eliminate it or eliminate some of that work, um, we can eliminate the east patrol garage or garages. Um, given the, ge the geographic location of where our tender is taking place and then rebudget it in 2022. Uh, if we want to include uh, County Road 1 between Hulbert and Irish Headline, that's a road that still has not yet been resurfaced and it's the last little piece on County Road 1. Uh, the adjacent sections have been uh, resurfaced and for us it's a logical extension, it just didn't, it didn't hit the four-year plan. Um, and uh, of course, our four year plan expires after next year's work, and then we reinspect. So it may be something that shows up in the next four year plan. Uh, but, uh, but if council wants to advance that work, we're, we're, we can easily add that in for $700,000. Uh, Hollister pipe is a project that we talked about previously. It's not a high priority safety uh, project, but it is a project that needs to get done in the near future. Uh, this is uh, this project uh, was a former flood control. There was a bunch of large diameter pipes that provided some flood control uh, that really don't get um, they aren't necessary. We did a hydraulic analysis last year and confirmed we could abandon most, if not all of them, and then we had to slip line uh, two or three of them. So. Um, we can rebudget to do this work exclusively and kind of get the whole work done. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking of as well is uh, if this is something that council is not interested in at the present time, depending on how we're doing with our culvert work at the end of the season, we may be able to pick off one of one of these, you know, abandonments this year with some, if we do have some funds left over as we approach the end of the year. Yeah. But uh, but if we really want to make sure we focus on it and get it done, we can add some money into the budget at $550,000. Um, we are, as I mentioned, we are putting money aside for Lakeshore Drive uh, through a transfer, a reserve transfer. So that's 150,000. We can remove that and save Mr. 150. Oh. Sorry, oh, okay. I'll, continue. I'll continue on. Uh, we can uh, reduce that for $150,000 of savings. We're thinking that the work will be done in 2022. Our reserve balance is 300,000. So this will bring us to 450, which is in line with where our current estimate is right now. Of course, we have, we intend to do that this year. Uh, eliminate the microsurfacing uh, work this year. Not something I would recommend, but if uh, council is looking for some savings, we can eliminate some, if not all of the microsurfacing uh, for $450,000 savings. Similar to crack sealing, this is a very cost effective, low cost um, pavement preservation strategy, and it helps us to make sure roads don't get to the point where we need to resurface them. And then, so it just helps to defer, def defer the expensive work. So. Uh, from where I sit, this microservicing is a program I really believe in, and I think it works well, and I wouldn't recommend it. But again, if council's looking for some savings, we can, uh, it is something we can uh, reduce or eliminate. Uh, reducing the amount of money we're putting towards County Road 22. So to Councillor Fraser's point, actually, um, you know, here's a here's an example of a project and now need that we're budgeting. So um, I see once we have that list together, we are still doing exactly this. We're budgeting for now needs. So, um, uh, but if council wants to kind of pull back the amount that we're putting into the budget this year on County Road 22, uh, we can save uh, whatever whatever value council believes appropriate. My recommendation is at least maintaining $100,000 in this budget just to make sure we have the money to be able to move forward through 2021. Um, but the intent is again, we have $500,000 we're gonna work towards getting this project shovel ready in 2023. Whatever we have left over is gonna go into a reserve getting ready to do this work. 
And uh, so the summary of the options are here uh, that I just went through and the one I added in, which wasn't in the council report, but just based on the tender that we awarded yesterday is we could reduce the centerline painting uh, per that tender and save $45,000. And that's the end of that. Okay, thanks very much, Mr. Gallen, for your presentation, your report this morning. I am gonna open it up to questions and comments for anything in respect of uh, Mr. Dawn's uh, report this morning. I see Councillor Wirt has his hands up. I'll go to him and then uh, Councillor Smith. Through you, Mr. Warden. Um, because money is such a big part of this equation, Ben, uh, I just wanted to clarify this topic. But uh, in regards to the Nation Rise project, uh, when it was done in South Dundas, there's a road user agreement that the county's benefited from. And it looks like our project will come to a culmination here towards the end of of uh, March, I believe, and are the counties standing to benefit from Has that, road, meeting. that road user agreement as well, or is that just, am I missing that in the budget, or are you just waiting for that for next year? Um, well, we we do stand to benefit from that, and I, I look forward to finishing the asphalt, uh, excuse me, the road evaluations post construction, and then from that, we're going to be able to determine what kind of uh, deterioration we saw as a result of it, and we can expect to get uh, financially compensated for that. So it is, it hasn't been included in the budget just because there is, you know, it is a very much a based on that evaluation. So I'm at this point, I don't know what what's coming our way, uh, but I would expect something will be coming our way. So it's a good news story in, in a sense for council, but it is also, it's representing kind of our loss of life of our roadways too. So it's, it's good and bad news. Uh, so to, I guess to specifically answer your question, it's going to be it's going to be found money for us this year, and council can t determine what it wants to do with it um, when it does show up on our doorstep. Subsequent, please. Yeah. So uh, thank you, and I and I recognize that. I guess my only other comment pertains to County Road 22. Um, obviously, I'm not familiar with uh, every aspect of our road department's. Uh, uh, needs, but I will certainly say that 22 is deteriorating quickly, um, particularly west of Maxville. There's an incredible amount of heavy traffic and everything we can do to advance that schedule would be appreciated. It's, uh, it's a very vital artery to uh, several big businesses and that obviously creates an element of danger whenever that road uh, falls into disrepair like it has. So I ask for that consideration. Thank you. Hey, thank you, uh, Councillor Smith. Uh, thank you, uh, through you, Warden. Um, I'm just wondering, in the uh, in in the interests of uh, staying within the uh, proposed budget, um, I'm looking at uh, a couple of the options, and uh, two of them are similar. Uh, one, in my mind, needs uh, some more attention than the other, and uh, that is the uh, Saint uh, Saint Andrew's uh, rehabilitation. Um, it's approximately the same amount of money that the Lakeshore uh, drive uh, work would take. Um, as it was noted uh, in the presentation, uh, the Lakeshore Drive project doesn't need to be done this year. However, the uh, the St. Andrews rehabilitation project is scheduled to get done, and um, and and I see that the ditching is is a uh, is a sidebar to that work. Um, I'm thinking probably the best time to do that ditch is while we're there working already on the uh, the curbs. Uh, driveway culverts, uh, the road and whatnot. Uh, so it's going to be a, a lot less, less cost to do it now than it would be to do it later. So I'm just going to uh, uh, ask uh, that we look into that um, uh, that option there that if, if uh, to stay within the budget limits that we do the work in St. Andrews and maybe defer Lakeshore until next year. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any comments, uh, Mr. Don? Yeah, just, just for clarity, we are doing the ditching along the whole section of, of County Road 18, so we're cleaning up the drainage there. What the $180,000 enhancement is, is to actually put in a pipe and bury about 50% of the ditches. So it's it's not that the ditches aren't going to get done, it's just that we are uh, providing more buried ditch than what currently, you know, what would, what would exist now uh, or what would exist under the budget that we have uh, included in the draft budget. Uh, yeah, thanks. I'm sorry. I didn't make that clear. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Um, 
other than that, it, uh, I mean, every part of our, our county is as important to uh, each one of the townships as it is to the township that it's running through. And although this is going through South Scoremont, we got to keep in mind, County Road 18 is one of the few uh, county roads that actually go from, from east to west and, and cover all the, uh, the counties. Um, it's the main art artery and uh, uh, it's not just functional for the residents, but it's, um, uh, you know, it takes away an eyesore for our, our people traveling from one end of the county to the other. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councillor McGillis, and then Councillor Fraser. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, the uh, area we were talking about earlier, and I just I had just got back on. There's something wrong with my camera. It went back off again, so I had to reboot my whole computer. So I missed part of the discussion here. But uh, I went wanted to bring up. I think probably what uh, Councillor Smith was talking about was the um, the area east of St Andrews. Uh, you were doing some ditching and also asphalt work too as well. Are we going to line that work? I want to make sure that we line that work with our municipality because, of course, we are going to be reconstructing those sidewalks there. And uh, what around what time, Ben, do you think that uh, we'll be starting that work? Um, that That's a great question. I would suspect we're going to start it. Uh, I, I'm going to guess what I'm going to guess early July is when we would start it and absolutely we've already had discussions with Ross and his team at uh, South Stormont to make sure that you know we're going to we'll be the lead on this project and we're going to you know work very hand in hand with South Stormont to make sure that uh, that everybody's interests are, are looked after there so for, for sure it's, it's top of mind that we want to work together and, and do it right. Right. Okay, thank you Mr. Warden. Uh, I, I had mentioned uh, when I put my hand up after that motion was read I made I made uh, mention to the fact that I think that aggregate uh, royalties should be put in the reserve fund uh, regarding what uh, this, just to support the motion that uh, Council of Bibles uh, moved, and I think that uh, that would be a start to put monies away for the things that you know for the roads that need to be done that I said earlier there's that are on the back burners. So, is is rest of council support that uh, motion? Yes, we did, and the motion for the aggregate royalties to put it in reserves. We have a right, uh, Yeah, that wasn't in there, but uh, Councillor Byfels has his hand up, so I'll get him to reply to that one. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, perhaps, Councillor McGillis, you can bring that forward when we actually debate that policy when it comes back to Council. That would be, I'm not saying it's a good or bad idea, but uh, I think that's something that certainly uh, staff can look at and put as an option that day when we debate the policy it's fine with me yep i think that's a great opportunity a great time to do so thanks uh councillor byfels anything else uh, councillor mcgillis no no that's fine thanks for now okay thank you and i will go to councillor fraser thank you mr warden um yes if we get back uh, i'd like to get back to uh if i may the options and uh some of my thoughts on the options um the preventive maintenance um, is 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 vital to uh, to ensure the life of our uh, our county roads as well, as well as our municipal roads. So, uh, and much of the discussion was about now roads uh, roads for 2020, 21, and 22, and the classifications of. And the preventative maintenance, I do firmly believe. I firmly believe in preventative maintenance. And uh, and listen to uh, Director Dahan, Mr. Dahan, speak about the adding. Uh, the value, the hundred thousand dollars, as uh, as as preserving our roads, uh, and uh, maybe down the road, <laughs> in the future, we uh, won't have so many now roads if we uh, step up and look after the preventive maintenance end of it. I'm fully in support of adding um, the uh, the value of a hundred the the value added to our roads by including an extra hundred thousand dollars i think is important it alleviates some of the conversations we have in the future or future councils will have i'm also in, fa in favor of the uh, the microsurfacing treatment we've seen it uh, the value of it we've seen the benefit of it and i think uh, preserving our roads is a better option than rebuilding our roads um the hollis or culverts if they're not immediately needed to be uh decommissioned I 
I wonder, Mr. DeHaan, can we do that one a year or one every other year? Can that be worked into the budget so that it's done over time? And then my uh, last comment would be uh, consideration, much like we're talking about County Road 18 and in St. Andrews, uh, the urbanization of ditches. Um, as we move forward, uh, we're into well into the 21st century, uh, having ditches run through our town um, really, um, I don't think is something we all want. I think there's an opportunity to look at the urbanization of our ditches in our communities, uh, um, be it through a partnership, uh, or be it uh, wholly at the county expense, um, I think that's something we need to consider more often. And, and uh, as uh, I think uh, Councilor McGillis talked about, the coordination of, of efforts within uh, our villages along with the counties, maybe we can take better advantage of these projects. Um, thank you, Mr. Warden. Okay, thank you, uh, Councilor Fraser. I'll go to Councilor Wirt. Through you, Mr. Warden, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong here, but the, all the items that we're discussing here right now are already included in a budget that allows us to hold taxes at the current state. And we're sitting on an incredibly strong uh, reserve position, and we're coming hopefully out of an environment that has challenged a lot of our residents. And I think the opportunities here for us to show some real leadership do as much as we can to stimulate the economy and tell Ben to take advantage of this position that we currently are taking, uh, that we're looking at and maximize our input into, into our infrastructure. I think the timing's right on this, that, uh, that we move as aggressively as possible and fulfill as many of these expectations. And I, and I think that it's gonna create a, the right message that needs to be sent right now that you know, we're going to come out of this and we're we're going to be stronger and we're going to be better and we're going to be prudent as far as how we're handling taxpayers money. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very, very well said, uh, Councillor Wirt. Uh, Councillor Byfels. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Um, I do have some comments on on the the options. I think uh, uh, I agree with Councillor Frazier on the crack ceiling. Uh, I think South Stormont brings a good case up for St. Andrews. We can find the money for that. Uh, yes to the micro in the yards. Uh, as for County Road 1, I would leave that as a possibility for next year since we're doing 16, which is just uh, uh, down the road from it. I agree with Councillor Frazier on the Hollister. Do you know, as, as Ben has alluded to, uh, if there's money left over in the culvert budget, then maybe that's an opportunity to use it then. Um, yes, to the micro, uh, it is it is a saving uh, grace to our highways. I know County Road 2 here was done a number of years ago. <clears throat> it was done in major reconstruction in 2008, I believe. Um, it is in excellent shape, and I think it's just looking after it and, and keeping it hollow whole is what you need to do. Um, certainly support Councillor Ward on 22. We need to continue on and get that road done. It's uh, the truck traffic on it's enormous and uh, it that feeder route from Maxville or I should say McEwenville down to 138 needs to be uh, looked after. Um, but something else that you know I've been doing the, the number crunching here. Um, I think council needs to figure out where they want the, the tax rate. Um, I will give uh, staff and Rebecca a lot of credit for bringing the tax rate actually in as a as a negative number going down. Uh, we've added a bit bits and pieces to it, but nothing significant. Uh, I would like to propose to council that uh, we put the tax rate, leave the tax rate where it is. Uh, that gives us a little bit more money. My calculation, if we take the 45, put that back in, we're you know, about 425,000, but I will uh, defer to the treasurer on that. But if we keep the tax rate equal to 2020, everybody in South in SDG, unless their assessment changed because of a rebuild or, or something has come along, uh, they'll pay the same county taxes they did last year. And I think that's fair. I, that would give us a little bit of extra room to do either these projects or something else that 
um, we have uh, maybe haven't considered as we've gone through the budget. I know Ben's is is almost 50 percent, so uh, uh, it would allow us to do some, you know, the extra CAC ceiling, you know, do St. Andrews easy. Uh, I'm a little leery of taking that 150 out for Lakeshore because if it fails this year, it, it'll become it'll won't be a an easy to tender project. It'll have to be done now, and then that's a hundred thousand dollars extra. So we got to be prepared for that. Um, but that would be my suggestion to council that we keep the tax rate where it is, take that little extra money, invest it in our county system, and I think that's very fair to our residents. Okay, thank you, Councilor Byfels. I'll go to Rebecca just in regards to if she can give us a quick update in respect of where we are now with the uh, percentage of the budget and how much would we save if we go back to last year's budgeting uh, increase. On, okay, through you, Mr. Chair, based on the minor changes that we've completed so far, um, we've added $53,000 to what, uh, what the proposed budget was, but we are in a position right now where we can add Another three hundred eighty thousand to the. Sorry, uh, Mr. Warden, I can't hear a word. Sorry, is, can anybody hear me now? Is that better? Nothing. It it was kind of the same as yesterday. You sound like you're twenty feet away. That is so odd. I'll just move my computer a little bit. Nothing. It's about the same as yesterday. Uh, Mr. Same Warden, I turn my volume up and it's fine with me. I'm uh, at max volume. I'm cranked up to 100 now too. Just move your own volume up, everyone. I um I want to make sure everybody can hear me though. So if if you can't hear me, I can log out and log back in again. Is that is? I think you're muted, uh, Warden Prebo. Sorry, I can hear very clearly. So I'm just asking uh, Councillor McGillis, can you hear? Yes, I hear it better. Okay. okay, so continue. Excellent. Okay, so based on the minor changes that we made to the budget so far, um, we have added $53,000 uh, to the draft budget through adding to the RN, the donations and economic development. But we are in a position, we could add an extra $380,000 to the budget, which maintains our tax rate at last year's rate. So we can um, still add three hundred eighty thousand dollars. I know originally council's uh, direction was to maintain the tax rate at zero percent change. Adding that three eighty three hundred eighty thousand would uh, maintain the tax rate from last year. Okay, thank you. What is the? I guess we need to know what the wishes of council are. Is either to add in another three hundred eighty thousand, which would bring it to the same number as we had last year, or if we're looking for a decrease in twenty twenty one in property tax. So if I can have some comments with that, please, Councillor Williams. What what was the tax rate last year? Zero. If I could. no, uh, the tax uh, rate itself. Rate. Yep. Um, well, uh, was it was an increase. Um, tax rate last year went up 0.62 percent from oh, yes. 2019, and that was to assist with funding the manors. Um, but this year, we are at in 2020, it's 0.5826. Say that number again, sorry. 0.5826 is the 2020 tax rate. So if yep. we maintain it, that will be the 2021 rate as well. So it, it would be a 0.5 increase. No, it would be nope. a 0%, sorry, 0% uh, change in tax rate if we add 380,000. So we would maintain the 0.5826. Right. Um, is, that's what um, Councillor Williams is asking. I believe. Uh, yes. Wrong. Yeah. Uh, I, but I'd like to us to to stay at a at a zero. I think um, I think that that's you know was was the thing to start with. Uh, I, I think it would be prudent given the the uh, you know the economics of COVID and and you know being responsible to our taxpayers. Um, you know what I would suggest is uh, you know if we can. If we can keep it at zero, um, then uh, I think that would still add uh, something to the budget, and we could leave it to staff to uh, to prioritize whether that's, you know, crack sealing or resurfacing, microsurfacing. 
Okay, through your warden Prevo, if I may respond. Um, Great. Okay, um, so um, as per Council Williams request, currently, just to clarify, as it stands with the minor changes we made yesterday, we're sitting at a minus 0.74% change to the tax rate. So adding the $380,000 to the roads budget will bring us at a 0% change. So we will be maintaining the tax rate itself, the same as 2020. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, any, any other comments uh, from members of council? Councilor Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, I, I do agree that uh, that that we could add three hundred fifty thousand dollars. We could do some extra things, but um, I, I think that this budget, with everything left in, is is a pretty comprehensive budget, and I think that staff has done very well. And it's not like we're we're not delivering a lot of services to our people, and and yet um, not just in re, in the reality of, of a few dollars that that they reduced. It's also uh, I would think very good leadership and also a, a compassionate budget and if we can leave it where it is um it, it's not really a year to have to do more i mean if, if you i would take it more from the context of looking over this overall budget what staff is included and i think whether that in, whether whether that was an increase or, or a decrease it's a solid budget as far as what we're looking for as services so i mean to reach for more, sure, there's always a little bit more you can do. There's always there's a lot more you can do when it comes to roads, but it's our quality of service in there. And if we have the opportunity to have quality of service and combine it with a little bit of a compassionate and, and realistic understanding of what some people are really dealing with out there, um, a couple of dollars here and there is especially for people on fixed incomes. And, and that this, this is without a doubt been a tough year. And we're not over yet either. COVID has not magically gone away. So there are people that, that perhaps last year could have survived and they may be that much more precarious in their businesses. Who knows? I mean, we, we don't know what's going to happen after this round and, and, and hopefully it goes in the direction that we're thinking of, but maybe it doesn't. And then it's another tough economic year for the people. So, I, I mean, if this was a, a budget that, that staff delivered where there was just sharp knife cuts to uh, to to confer with, their, to, to go along with what council had indicated and, and, and I had indicated as well, at the start that, that I couldn't see us asking for more money, then yes, I, I would agree with Councillor Bybills and say, well, no, we've got to put some things in because we're just leaving the cupboard bare, but we're not doing that. And I would I would, I would implore my colleagues to to just think that this budget is very good and, and does it, it accomplishes both goals. And I think we should leave it where it is. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Armstrong. I agree 100% in regards to uh, leaving the budget where it is, but I'm gonna ask the question, and a show of hands, if, if, if council is in favor of increasing the budget another 380,000 and bring it to a zero, I'll ask that question. Or if not, then we'll leave it at uh, the decrease of the, uh, the 380,000. So who's in favor of increasing the budget another 380,000 to bring it to last year's 0% increase? And opposed to that. Okay, so I think the decision uh, is uh, we will not increase the budget by the additional 380,000. We will keep the budget uh, the same as what uh, was presented to us yesterday and today with the increase, I believe it was 52 or 53,000. Rebecca, I think that was the number you said this earlier. Yes, we added 53,240 dollars. Okay, so in that, and that brings us to a 0.7 something you said? Um, it's a point five seven eight three tax rate. Five seven eight three. Okay. Councillor uh, Bifels. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, there was a suggestion if council feels that we need to save uh, taxpayers money, that uh, uh, Ben had suggested we take forty five thousand dollars out of center line paving. So there's a, a pot of money that if you want to reduce the rate. Then, then do so. I wouldn't just throw the money away, but I mean, there's an opportunity. Okay, so Mr. Byfels is recommending that we remove the um, crack ceiling uh, forty-five thousand dollar budget. Is anybody in favor of removing that? That's center line paving. Sorry, center line crack ceiling. Yep, my apologies. Center line paving. So I'll ask the question: If uh, we remove the forty-five thousand for that purpose. Who's in favor of doing that? 
We have four people that would like to have it removed. Can I ask who would be in favor of leaving the 45,000 in the budget? One, two, three, four, five, six. So the 45,000 will remain in the budget. Thank you. Is there any other comments or questions to anything in regards to transportation or anything in respect of any of the budget that was presented to us yesterday or today? Councillor Ward. Through you, Mr. Wharton. Uh, whenever you get to be my age, and there's a few of you that are getting close, but nobody's actually right there, you get to sit through this process many times. And I just wanted to take my hat off to uh, to Tim and his staff for this process. I've seen budgets that uh, can wallow with lack of leadership, and uh, to put this group together with the uh, with the support of an incredible staff has made this uh, an enjoyable experience. So. Uh, Thanks very much for the leadership and uh, and setting the standard that we can all all sort of reach for. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Bird. I, I would suggest that we can all echo those exact words. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to go back. I guess if we're if we're at a standstill in respect of where the budget is now, we did have some discussion yesterday in regards to the IT department. Uh, there's some un unanswered questions there in regards to if we're approving. The budget that uh, Mike is asking for, so I'm going to ask Mike to come back on and bring up those comments or questions again, and then we can decide by motion if we're going to accept them or not. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Warden. Just before yep. Mike uh, goes ahead, uh, just as a little bit, and thank you, uh, Councillor Wart, for that. Um, you know, a lot of work goes into this, and and I think Council's had a, you know, we're 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 doing it virtually for the first time, which which creates challenges, but uh, you know, a very robust document and. Uh, you know, I think council had uh, some some good discussion. A lot of that stuff. Just uh, just to to echo what uh, a warden. I don't want to belabor the meeting, but uh, what uh, warden Prevo had mentioned. Uh, I spoke with Mike last night. We we weren't really clear. Uh, there was quite a bit of discussion around um, in the IT department, but it was just the addition of the staff. So uh, I I believe the direction was to to bring it back in March for for further review. Um, and I thought if there's more information that we could provide because we're sitting again today if there's more information that we can provide council in terms of those things that were brought up yesterday levels of service uh what we do for the townships cost things like that that will you know may, maybe uh maybe give council enough information to to make a decision today or if not we can we can bring it forward uh in march for a decision um the, the challenge with bringing it forward in march if there's changes made at that point that's going to affect the 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 global budget and and the tax rates and the tax ratios. So, um, I think you know, as as Warden Prevo said, if if we can come to some type of conclusion today, that would be helpful. Uh, if not, if council is not comfortable with that, certainly we can uh, we can bring it forward again in March for more discussion. So that's just a little bit of a a premise to uh, to to what Mike's going to say. So thank you very much. I'll just turn it over to Mike. Hey, thank you, Mr. Simpson. Mike, go ahead, please. Okay, uh, great. Uh, thank you, uh, Warden Prevo and Council. Um, I do have a short presentation prepared um, to provide context um, of the IT service and uh, the request for additional staff. So um, if you'll bear with me a few minutes, um, I would like to just go through so some of the some of the services services we do provide. And I did run a report um, of some of the, uh, the help desk tickets that we do. Um, uh, sorry, that that uh, we did over the past year, just so you have a sense of numbers and the, I guess, the division of labor amongst the different municipalities. Um, so I'm just going to start my uh, sharing my presentation here. Um, Okay, so um, I, I just wanted to um, respond to some of the comments, clarify so, some of the comments and concerns yesterday. So um, the county is the IT services department for North Dundas, South Dundas, North Glengarry, and South Glengarry. Um, and we do provide limited services for North Glengarry. We host VADM uh, just starting this year. And for South Stormont, we do a little bit. Um, we help with the integration of uh, VADM uh, property owner information up into the GIS system. Um, we really deliver three streams of service. So uh, the first one is the day-to-day -day support and maintenance of your desktop, your servers, your networks. Uh, the second is the hosting of enterprise systems. And the third stream of service, we deliver special projects. Uh, so from a support and maintenance perspective, 
Um, we take care of the firewall and security services at for the uh, local municipalities. Uh, we do everything for user management from creating new accounts, resetting passwords, onboarding, offboarding. Um, we are the offsite backup um, for corporate data for three local municipalities. And uh, we do a lot of procurement sourcing and setup of new uh, laptops, printers, desktops, and we do a lot of procurement for other IT devices and accessories. So I did run a report on our uh, ticket system, and in 2020, um, we closed 2,759 tickets and logged 1,981 hours of technician time. Now, please keep in mind that these numbers um, are usually underdocumented. I know myself personally. If I get a um, when I get a phone call directly from staff um, or your CA or your clerk, um, I don't always take the time to put in a ticket. So this is usually underreported. Um, so just give you uh, a quick overview. Um, the the light blue is the number of hours, and the dark blue is the number of tickets. So for South Glengarry in 2021, we closed 341 tickets, representing 167 hours. North Glengarry 47 tickets, representing 40 hours. South Stormont, uh, four tickets representing three hours. North Stormont, 473 tickets representing 160 hours. South Dundas, 201 tickets representing 152 hours. North Dundas, 248 tickets representing 199 hours. The library, 351 tickets representing 219 hours. And under the SDG, bu bu SDG bucket, we're looking at 776 tickets representing 846 hours. Now, the discrepancy there can be explained by um, the fact that a lot of tickets may be initiated um, from local municipalities, but because we're working on systems and servers on site, uh, they're put under in the SDG bucket. Um, from a hosting perspective, we do host VADM, the uh, municipal information system for um, five local municipalities. And in 2021, this spring, we're going to start hosting websites for North Dundas and North Stormont. Now, this was pers pursuant to the joint website RFP that we ran last year that everybody was invited to uh, to be part of and uh, North Dundas, North Stormont chose to join us on that RFP. Um, from a special projects perspective in the past year or so, um, in, in the spring, uh, we helped out North Dundas with virtual council meetings, uh, replace their on-site servers, replace their network equipment, put in managed Wi-Fi, migrated their email to Office 365 and um, set up their backup and we are their off-site um, data backup site. Um, so Dundas, we replaced the server, uh, replaced network gear, um, migrated them to Office 365. We do offsite backups for them, and they were part of a um, joint RFP uh, for fire radio equipment. Uh, for North Stormont, um, we assisted them in the beginning with virtual council meetings, refurbished one of their servers, migrated to Office 365, and they were part of the fire radio system RFP as well. And for South Glengarry, we helped them with their customer relations uh, management app, uh, we are their offsite data backup site, um, and we migrated into Office 365. Now, moving ahead to 2021, um, what we've been asked to assist with, uh, North Dundas, we've been in talks about upgrading their telephone system and helping them uh, implement the eScribe uh, system as well. Uh, for South Glengarry, looking at replacing a phone system, uh, they need network refresh both at their admin building and at the Charlotte Arena. I uh, need a uh, server refresh this year. Uh, working with their staff on council, streaming council meetings and also part of the eScribe project. And North Stormont, uh, they're due for network refresh this year and uh, their phone system, where uh, I'm in talks with uh, the CAO, the co current contract ends the end of March and uh, we're making plans to see what we're going to do about that as well. And for South Dundas, we're currently continuing um, network and Wi-Fi improvements. Um, what we're looking to do in 2021 as well is implement um, the VADA Municipal Information System has some online modules. Some local municipalities are using them, some are not. So we'd like to roll these out to any local municipality that is is, is interested. So we're looking at uh, utility building, property taxes, online timesheets, building permits and payments online. And beyond 2021, um, more and more, uh, we've been asked to connect remote work locations to the min office. And, and these are patrol garages and uh, arenas. And traditionally, these um, locations have been kind of so silos and cut off from the main admin building. Um, so that brings another level of complexity and security uh, considerations if we start doing that. Uh, we want to build a proactive IT asset management plan for every municipality. And of course, there's the ever evolving cybersecurity landscape that we need to keep up with. Um, so in conclusion, I, I just want to comment on um, 
the fact that the comment that the the IT department did grow fast, uh, but to that point, if we look at the starting point, it was not sufficient to support the workload. So even with the um, before the Perry report uh, was done, uh, there were three FDEs in the IT department, and at, at that point, um, just was not enough resources to deliver the service that they were being asked to deliver. And at the time that I started too, uh, there were two outside firms that were providing support. Um, all that workload has been brought in house and those contracts have been canceled. Um, reviewing the Perry report last night as well, um, the suggestion at that time, and this was in 2017, and um, the demand in the environment has changed quite a bit since then, they were recommending uh, six FTEs in the IT department and to supplement with uh, co-op students. Um, and right now we're sitting at, um, we're four staff, we have one vacant position, we're asking for that that sixth position uh, to fin to to uh, complement um, our staffing. And and the last thing I want to mention is, uh, you know, with, without the staff to do the work, we can contract out some of this work. Uh, but the approach that we've taken, and it's been the preferred approach, um, is to develop our talent in-house. So you can pay a vendor to uh, uh, manage your systems to deliver projects, um, but then internally we don't have that capacity or the capability, the breadth or the depth of skill and talent we need to, to maintain those systems afterwards. Um, it also has the, um, the side effect, it's not a primary benefit, but a side effect of uh, you know, private, providing a job to somebody locally. Because when you contract out this work, the money leaves our economy. Uh, it goes to companies in, in big cities, the employees in big cities, even sometimes abroad. So, um, you know, it, again, it, it is possible to contract some of this work out just um, from, from a team perspective. Um, having a, a slightly bigger team uh, gives our, our staff uh, the chance for development, the chance for improvement, um, and really hone their skills and have somewhere to go in their career at the county. Um, thank you for your time and allowing me to elaborate on my presentation yesterday. Okay, thank you. I will open it up to any comments or questions from uh, members of council. I guess my question, I, I'll go to Councillor Fraser, then I have a question or a comment. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, uh, Mr. St. Ong, um, I was uh, supportive yesterday of your contention. I'm more than supportive of your contention today. Uh, and. Uh, your skills are, are evident uh, with the challenge delivered to you yesterday to provide information to us today and the information provided um, overnight. It's uh, thank you very much for that. And I think of the technology just to my fellow members, the technology that we're using today compared to the technology we used five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and the changes that we're going to see coming towards us in the future. Um, streaming, uh, how many times are we going to go onto YouTube uh, individually as municipalities? The things that we're able to do and to have the talent in house, I think, is so absolutely necessary uh, that it's, it's available to us. We may not all choose to use the talent that's available to us. That's our choice. Uh, but for those of us that uh, to see the benefit of having uh, a skill set available to us, uh, uh, as has been evident even today uh, through uh, managing this system, uh, I think it's important. I think we should give due consideration to Mr. St. Olger's uh, request. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Okay, thank you, Councillor Fraser. I'm gonna ask the clerk, clerk um, do we have a motion in regards to that? So I'll ask you to read the motion. Um, through you, actually, Mr. Warden, we don't require a, a motion for these additional staffing changes. They're already built into the draft budget. Okay, thank you. So I guess we just need a, okay, Councillor Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Warden. I just wanted to, uh, to uh, and as well, I thank Mike for his uh, information and everything. Um, I was one of the ones yesterday uh, a little bit reticent in that, uh, as I said, I didn't quite understand exactly how this would work and how the concept would go. And I think uh, I think it was actually Councillor Bivalds that made the most salient remark that, that resonated with me in that um, we understand that it's growing and, and, and he wasn't suggesting that he was against it, I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Councillor Bivalds, but uh, he was more expressing uh, the, the statement that stuck with me was, um, yes, it's growing and it's growing fast, but how big does council envision this to grow? Because it could be almost endless. And that, that was sort of, 
question that I was looking for information on as well. Um, and to, to understand what more clearly what I'm agreeing with and, and, and I do understand it better. And I thank you for that. But I, I think that, that um, for maybe not so much for you, Mike, uh, a little bit for you, but more for council. I think uh, I think Councillor Bybelt's question still stands in that uh, how big would, uh, would, would council envision this department to get and how involved? I mean, this, this level, I, I think I understand it, but, but what is the end goal? And, and uh, I don't know if I, maybe it's not. To, to expect you to answer that, but uh, it would be nice now to have on the record at least um, some of the thoughts of council as to where we would uh, take this down the road. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's a difficult question to answer. I think Councillor Armstrong, only based on what Councillor Fraser said a while ago, the technology that we're using today is uh, certainly different than what we used five years ago, and uh, it's changing daily, so I'm just not sure where we're going to be in five years or ten years from now. Uh, we might have to add uh, Twice the amount of people that we have now in regards to the IT department. I mean, it's it's a very difficult question to answer, I, I would think, at this point in respect to council. But it's certainly a discussion that we could have at a later date in regards to uh, where we want to see that department going in the future. Well, I, I would I would agree with you to to a certain extent, uh, Mr. Warden. But uh, but also again, and I, and I say it again, to, uh, I think it's, it's it is a difficult question. But uh, again, when when Councillor Bybel's asked it, I think it's still we could. Now, you don't talk in specifics. You don't talk in specifics for anything, really. If you get it to go ten years out, but um, the thought could be to to be allowing Mr. St. Owens to look at utilizing all possibilities for uh, you know to, to have it be a very forward uh, SDNG or to have one sort of balanced to to what the needs are and not what the capabilities could be. I mean, you know, uh, do you want to build the biggest spaceship or do you just want to at least follow along and, and pair it with the with the needs and not necessarily having IT be the, the the focal point for how it is that we conduct our business. And I'm not suggesting that I have an opinion on it. Just sort of even even a very broad direction would be would be worthwhile. But we can discuss it at a different time next year or leave it for future councils. I just think it was a good question and I'd, I'd like to hear some people's thoughts, but I'll see that. Yeah, I'm certainly not taking away that it's not a good question. I just am not sure. I, I personally don't have any answers in respect of it, but I know Councilor Williams keeps putting her hand up, so I'll go to her and then we'll come back to that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, and, and thanks, Mike, for, for putting uh, that presentation together. It certainly uh, did help answer some of my questions in terms of uh, where we're at and what the existing demands are. Uh, to Councilor Armstrong's uh, point, uh, yeah, I agree. We need to be we need to be um, uh, conscious of and, and and plan sort of meaningfully uh, for the future. I realize that you know we don't re you know we don't know where IT needs are are going to go in the future, but that doesn't mean that we don't plan for this year or a subsequent year uh, in terms of what we do know. Um, if we leave uh, this open to um to the demands of individual municipalities it the you know the the demands will 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 escalate i'm sure uh, and and not that that's necessarily a, a bad thing but i think it's up to this council to uh to provide a a, a strategy an agreeable strategy that works uh in the broader context of the counties and the services that the counties should be offering in conjunction with the needs and desires of the local municipalities. And we can only know that if we sit down and, and discuss it. And uh, it, it, I don't think it's a good idea to let it happen sort of uh, organically. I think we, we do need to, to have a plan. Uh, so I, I look forward to more discussion on this. Okay, thank you. Maybe that's a topic uh, during a committee of a whole meeting at some point. Any other uh, comments or questions? Councillor McGillis, then Councillor Byfels, and Councillor Smith. Oh, you see me this time. Thank <laughs> you, Mr. Warden. I apologize for the last time. <laughs> that's okay. Um, I'm sure it would get out one way or the other. But I just wanted to say, as I said yesterday, we don't use anything in, related to IT at the counties, except for the GIS system. And um, 
you know, I was just talking to, to our IT person. We have the talent there in-house, as uh, Councillor Fraser was saying, in-house. We have it in-house. Um, the only thing is, I don't think it's going to make a difference what I say today because, uh, you know, most of the uh, municipalities are using the IT services from the counties, which is the choice they made. And I have, I don't begrudge that in any way, but uh, back in, when we started with our own IT, we had a firm explain to us about the security. I know the security Mike had mentioned, which you've done it, you've really done a really good job making this uh, report today. The security in terms of um, ransomware, a lot of municipalities and in industry, uh, private were getting hit with ransom and, and they were holding back all the information that, uh, you know, a lot of important information that could have really um, cost a lot of people a lot of money. So we decided to move forward with our own. Um, so we maintain our own IT system, doing a great job. And uh, it would be prudent to me to support, not to support or to support, I guess I'll use the word support because it's gonna cost more money to have more IT and we're not gonna be able to use it at South Vermont. So, but on behalf of the best interest of all the, all the municipalities within SDNG, it probably would be the right thing to do. So just wanted to put that out there. Uh, I don't know if uh, Councillor Smith wants to add anything more. We need to sign council with me, but um, I just think that uh, the, you are doing a great job, Mike. And I um, just want to reiterate what I said yesterday. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll go to Councillor Byfels and then Councillor Smith. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Warden. After uh, Councillor Armstrong mentioned my name way too many times in one one speech, I need to at least uh, uh, follow that up. And you know, I, I do appreciate the presentation and the work you and your crew do, Mike. It's just I think it's the concerns that not myself, of, of other members of County Council, that you know we uh, want to make sure that this is part of the department doesn't grow to a point that it's 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 beyond what we think is is the right kind of department for the counties <clears throat> you have to remember before you were here there was one and a half people and now we're up to five or whatever and i'm not saying they're not needed um, but we do need a governance structure between us and the lower tiers and how we work i know south dundas has used your <clears throat> your uh, staff services immensely and they really appreciate it uh, however, then you have the South Stormonts of the world and North Glens that don't use it as much. And is it fair in the global sense of the word? You know, we, I think possibly what we need is this is the baseline. If you want to do more, then, you know, there's some sort of trade offs in there. But uh, I'm good with your proposed business plan right now. But I think you need to come back to council to, to, to finalize it and if uh, and how that whole governance model will work with uh, us and uh, and lower tiers. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Byfels. Councillor Smith, please. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Ward. Uh, my thoughts on this is, uh, yes, this is a very important uh, position and it's uh, something that's very necessary and it's gonna become more important and more necessary as uh, time goes on. Um, so I'm not against uh, having someone in that position. However, uh, I'm just wondering, um, with the dependence of uh, so many of the townships relying on this support, is it going to get to a point where there's not going to be enough and we're going to be looking to hire another one? Um, so that, that's one of my uh, questions. Uh, the other thing is, is right now, uh, like I said, we're gonna, there's going to be more need for the support and you're going to have possibly three, four townships all at the same time need some help who uh who goes to the top of that list who gets done first that's going to be another uh problem you're going to have and, and that's i think the problem with having one person to share and then getting back to uh you, you presented a, a really good graph that caught my attention about the tickets of how often uh, your uh, department was used and the man hours involved that it took to use it um is there a is there a sense of of uh maybe invoicing out those hours to the townships that are using your service and uh, getting our, our uh, wages back or our money back for the uh, the hiring of this position. That's it, thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Any comments, uh, Mr. Senos? Uh, yeah, a couple uh, years ago, uh, thank you for the question. A um, couple years ago, uh, we did start uh, down the road of a governance committee. Uh, there is an MOU in place, and the decision at the time was made by the, the CAO group. Um, they agreed that there would be no invoicing back to the municipalities for the hours used, that it would be, uh, you know, the funded through the levy proportionate uh, just like everything else and the service was there uh, to be used by everybody now if that that is no longer desirable we can certainly go back and look at that model um, you know it's it's not um, it, it's not driven by us necessarily uh, but we do have that um, the governance committee that like i said that recessed um, about a year ago because of covid and it is uh, number one on my list to finish off this year. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Smith. Yeah, yeah, thanks. That's a great answer. Um, and I understand that the uh, at the onset of the of the program, um, everybody was on the same playing field, the same level, and it made sense. Everybody was getting equal use from the program, and uh, it made sense then not to charge it because we're all paying uh, for it through our our uh, township levies. Things have changed since then, and that's why I brought up because it may be time to also change the uh, uh, the way we do business now. Thanks. Okay, I'll go to Councillor uh, McGillis, then Councillor Warden, and then we'll wrap it up. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, I think that uh, what Councillor Smith was referring to maybe is maybe the municipalities are not not using the IT system should be constipated. Uh, Concentrate. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, paid back. Paid back to the to the municipality for the services we're not using. We are paying the levy. All the municipalities are paying the levy, but compensated is what I was looking for. Sorry. Is there any thought in if you don't want to charge any municipalities for the use, is compensate them back that they're not using? We're already paying. We're paying for something that we're not using. Uh, we already have it in place. We're not going to stop it now. And I think. Any other councillors sitting there that had a, their own IT service or have their own services at their own municipality would agree with me. They wouldn't be getting more people at the IT system in the, at the counties if they already had it at their municipality. I'm pretty sure, I'm confident in thinking that that's what they, they would agree to. I think personally that's a very difficult thing to do, but I'm going to go to Councillor Armstrong. He's had his hand up, I think, comment towards this question, and then Mr. Simpson, and I'll go back to you, Mr. Warden. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Warden. I think, you know, there is some some merit. Uh, I think you're right. It'd be a very difficult question to, to, to answer. It's something to go on. But I think, uh, in fairness, if, if we're going to go down that road, then we need, we would need a very long discussion for everybody. We'll, we'll, we could go through every single service that is provided and see what's what's going to happen because, and and, and they're absolutely right, I, I, for both for Councillor Smith and Councillor McGillis, they're focusing on this because this is the question at the time. They're not using it, but I mean, and, and this is not to have a discussion now, uh, Mr. Warden, and I think if everybody wants to, then we could have a committee a whole just on this. You know, you think just today of, um, and, and it does help the bulk of people, just like a, a mirror image of this uh, question we have right now. But when you get to say the uh, the, the SDNG um, waste issue, North Dundas doesn't have any foreseeable need for that. Are we gonna be compensated for the money that's being spent on this, on this uh, study that's being done right now? I'm sure that South Dundas has things that they're not partaking in and to, to the same extent as North Dundas is. Are they going to get compensated? I think every single one of our townships could point to things that we don't really use as much as everybody else. So, and I'm not against having that discussion, but let's not just take it in a single piece because this is one thing that, that, that any one of us doesn't use. I think, uh, again, when I said, you know, we could have a philosophical discussion on how this goes um, and that could be part of it, but I don't think we can just take anything as a snapshot. Thank you. I agree with your uh, comments, um, Councillor Armstrong. Uh, Mr. Simpson, you had your hand up. Uh. Yeah, Mr. Warden, I believe Councillor Wharton had his uh, had his hand up, so I'll defer to him and then I'll speak. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Warden. Uh, through you, Mr. Warden. Uh, I just wanted to add in that uh, speaking with our own staff at South Glengarry uh, multiple times, uh, this service has been invaluable to our municipality and uh, I fully support uh, the request that Mr. Sainowich has. Um, I mean, just 
anyways, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Simpson. Yeah, I just, uh, I think the discussion has been helpful for, uh, for Mike and I, I mean, it's, it's certainly give us a, a lot of context and, uh, you know, this is an item that we can bring back. What I'm hearing, I think from the majority is that it needs more discussion. Um, so we can certainly bring it back, uh, to council, uh, in March, uh, for, um, as uh, Kimberly, as the clerk mentioned, it, it's included now in the budget. So we can have more discussion in March to confirm that that's uh, council's intention, or we can, we can make changes at that time and to, to some of the comments. I mean, certainly we can, uh, you know, define a, uh, create some type of document or whatever that, that defines a baseline uh, of service, um, you know, around, uh, how, how it's going to work and, and what kind of level of service the county is going to provide, uh, going forward. Uh, I do want to comment as well on, um, you know, if, if we start to, I think Councillor Armstrong said it very well. I, I, I think it's very, would be, uh, you know, certainly it can be discussed, but I mean, the whole concept of, of you know, the main thing that the county does is in income redistribution. Um, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So if we want to start discussing, um, you know, paying this back, if you're not using it, that runs contrary to the whole system that we have. and. We'd have to we'd have to start doing it for everything, which I I think would lead to a collapse of the system. So that's just my comment on that. Okay, thank you, Councillor McGillis. Uh, listening to all the other councillors, I think that we should make a decision today based on that. I don't think anything's going to change in March, so I would agree to um, to uh, for council to make a decision based on all the comments today. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bythels. Were you did you have a comment or question? I'm not sure if you've had your hand up or just moving it. No, I was just uh, waving it a bit, but no, I don't have a count, uh, comment on this. I do have one additional later on after this debate is done. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to ask the question: Is is council in favor in regards to Mr. Sainos's report this morning by moving forward uh, with his report, or do we want more information to come back in March? So I'll ask who's in favor in regards to supporting Mr. Sainos's report today one two three four five six seven so mr saint -Ogge, so you can continue moving forward with the report that you you sent us this morning thank you mr warden okay thank you mr uh, Councillor byfels did you have a comment in regards to something else i do mr warden thank you very much it, it goes back to the roads uh options and I, I i think um sitting here and having some time to think about it and and looking at um the projects and some of the ways Ben could finance things. And I fully respect council's decision on, on reducing the tax rate. I don't have an issue with that. I just thought it was an opportunity, but that's fair enough. Um, <clears throat> within the options, there's the, uh, the $150,000 that we as counties will be setting aside for the Lakeshore Drive culvert replacement. Um, it's something that if it went this year, we would have enough reserves to cover our butt to at least borrow from and pay back next year. I think, uh, I believe the, the project in St. Andrews West, uh, the duty additional uh, dish filling is an opportunity that we should not let go. Um, it, I know it's, the monies are not equal. However, we are saving 45 grand right off the start on center line tending, so, between the combination of that and uh, um, and the change of taking that hundred fifty thousand dollars instead of putting in a reserve, spending it on that urban renewal project in St. Andrews, I would like to put that uh, motion of that on the floor and uh, for count for council's uh, consideration. Okay, so just for clarification, Councilor Byfield, you're asking to remove the hundred and fifty plus the forty five. It is well, so I'll remove the 150, but not remove it, put it toward the St. Andrews project. You need another $30,000, and I would get it under the center line paving uh, account because it was recommended by Ben that we could save that money. So I'm just I'm being creative and trying to get that project done. And that's that's we still have $15,000 spare in the center line paving. I know that's not where council wanted to go, but uh. It, uh, I'm more than willing to take the 150 and shove it into the St. Andrews project at this time. Okay, so it's not adding or removing, it's just shuffling from one job to another. Okay, 
Thank you, Councilor Gardner. Uh, I would second that. I would second that. Okay, thank you. Can I have a show of hands who's in favor of moving those dollars to complete the St. Andrews? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, thank you, Councillor Byfels. That motion will uh, is 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 uh, moved forward. So the money's one hundred eighty thousand, I guess, will be transferred from the Lakeshore and the Centerline painting uh, over to the St. Andrews uh, job, I guess, if you want to call it that. But, okay. Any other comments or questions, Mr. Warden? Yep, um, go ahead. Uh, I would like to thank Council for their. Uh, indulgence in uh, moving the, my first motion through. I think it's uh, it's something that, you know, as much as I miss four years of council, I do remember the days where we were, you know, these meetings were two full days of really heavy duty talking and dealing and wheeling, and then we had Dennis Fife wrap it all up. Um, <laughs> but um, I do appreciate support on that. I think it's, you know, we will debate it as a policy coming forward, but it shows us that we're we're thinking ahead and not trying to catch up all the time. So I do appreciate that. Okay, thank you for your comments, um, Rebecca. Do we do you need anything else from from council in regards to moving forward? Or are you pretty clear in regards to what council is looking for? Uh, no, I believe I have everything I need, and I will bring forward in March the tax rates and tax ratio bylaws. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Yep. Motion? Uh, yep, Mr. Warden, I do have a proposed motion that I will need a mover and seconder for. It does read that the Council of the United Counties of Stormont, Dundas, Glengarry direct the Director of Financial Services Treasurer to bring back the 2021 budget with the addition of the approved changes along with the tax ratios and tax rate bylaws to the County Council meeting of March 15th, 2021 for final approval. Thank you. If I could have somebody move and second, please. So, so move. Moved by Councillor Byfell, second by Councillor Warden. All in favor of the motion? The motion is carried. Thank you. And before we adjourn, I, I think uh, Tim, ha Tim has a question, uh, Mr. Oh, my apologies. Yep. You, you know, so, sorry, Mr. Warden. I don't want to belabor the weed. I'm just wondering if Rebecca could just, just um, I mean, we've already passed the motion to bring it forward, but just summarize. She's got a spreadsheet if she summarizes the changes. And 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 the final tax rate. So just council knows going forward. Thank you. Sure, I can just review. Uh, so we have added forty thousand dollars for the mental health maps. Um, we've added a thousand dollars for the uh, for a donation history book printing. A donation to the Royal Canadian Legion of nine hundred and forty dollars was added. Um, we've increased the economic development uh, budget by eleven thousand three hundred and reallocated um, some other costs. Uh, the Lakeshore Drive Reserve of 150,000 has been removed. Uh, we've added the St. Andrews project for $180,000, and we've also removed $30,000 for centerline painting. So overall, the roads budget has no dollar value change. We've just realigned some some projects. So the overall change has resulted in a tax rate of point. 5783, which is a decrease from last year's tax rate of 0.74 percent. I have any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I hope everyone uh, heard Rebecca. <laughs> okay, so not saying none. So we'll uh, we'll wait till March, I guess, in regards to bringing that report back in uh, in regards to the uh, the tax rate at that point in time. So if there's nothing else, again, uh, echoing uh, the colleagues around the table, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Rebecca, Tim, and all the staff and the team uh, that they put uh, a great budget together. It's a you know, 50 some million dollar budget, and it's a budget that we can do, like uh, Councillor Bicell said earlier, we can do in a short period of time where uh, previous years, uh, many years ago, it was two days uh, uh, budget process, so which was very long. So congratulations to uh, Rebecca and all the staff to uh, come up with a uh, great budget for 2021. I'll ask uh, for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Wirt, that Council adjourn the budget meeting. Okay, all in favor of the budget? Budget, it's approved. Thanks very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon.